Uh, hey, everybody. Hopefully everything is in working order. The sound is low. Was, or that was at the music that was low. I can't get the someone. Uh, someone said something about the music being low, but no. I, I, mean, I assume cool. that was semi intentional. Uh, yeah, I might have said it really low because I we started late and then I had to run upstairs. Today was my son's birthday, so I needed to say say good night. Uh, because the the idea for this stream, like the actual idea for the stream that's happening, was a very very last minute thing. Well, you were you were kind of inspired to play Sonic 2. Right. And I was listening to the latest retro RGB podcast today, mm -hmm. in which Bob mentioned a post about uh, which is from uh, Chris Fratz, who I don't I don't know if, if he's here, but I <laughs> you know I have to be honest. I you know I, I try to listen to the the retro RGB podcast as often as I can, but clearly I need to visit the side more often because I didn't know Chris Fratz was a, a retro RGB contributor. Yeah, I um, didn't. I didn't either until I saw that post. And uh, I uh, I saw the the source of that the inspiration for that post was the video from uh, uh, Frame Raider. YouTube channel, right. which I actually found that channel like a month or two ago because I was looking for Magnavox to see like, okay, like who on YouTube seems to have a Magnavox odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> and the frame rare channel has this huge blowout video on the Magnavox odyssey. Not many people have done such a thing, uh, really <laughs> going through the Magnavox odyssey. And so I, uh, emailed uh, Frame Raider asking, could, "Could I hassle you for some Odyssey B-roll?" <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully for, you're back. A little, a little, a little quick uh, thing on a uh, on uh, uh, Analog Frontiers Part Two. So yeah, that that was that was a really so anyway. So I I linked you to that. And I'm like, hey, since you were thinking of playing Sonic Two, I wonder if you could pull this together just to do something a little unusual something a little different yeah yeah and you know i i got a late start on putting it together but it, it went pretty smoothly uh so thank this thanks to some people uh some help that i got and so so, so there's like a github for the so so I, I you at this point you probably know more than i do but uh, my, probably not my, my, under, but. my understanding is that this is the this you're taking the the Christian Whitehead version, correct? Uh, from the phone, and you can use your own version that you bought to play on your phone, right? Uh, and like decompile it and recompile it or something to run on well, like PC or Vita. You you decompile the I think you just decompile the actual game. You put that in a folder, and then there's a uh, a VPK, which is like what you install on a on a, on a hacked Vita or a hacked PS TV oh, and okay. uh, that installs it. And uh, I was able to install it. So I go, go ahead and switch over. I mean, hopefully everything is, is looking good. Uh, so currently uh, I, there's, so there's Sonic one, two and CD. I cannot, I did not get Sonic CD to work when I try to load it. It just like boots me back out. But I have huh. confirmed that Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 do work. Now, I saw someone in the chat before the stream started saying something about, like, uh, recommending some overclock, which I'm sure you're not going to be bothering with, because to, uh, something about the bonus stages or certain parts might run not full speed or something. So, I mean, it sounds like this process is a pretty early thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I bet I could overclock it using the um, like the Vita Graphics Configurator, but I'm not going to mess around with that right now. I don't want yeah. I don't want to I don't want to screw around with it and have it potentially break or something happen and we don't get to play it. Yeah, uh, let's just let's just play as is for now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so let's everybody just knows see that, how it goes. Yes. Uh, Sonic CD is, is separate, yes. And I think that that's still like like a beta version. Uh, I did notice like there's some pretty significant, significant load times. And it brings you up to this. It doesn't have like the menu built in. 
but you have uh, the different options here. But if you go into this, you can, the game options you have, so there's uh, the air speed cap. I mean, a lot of this stuff I probably don't even know about. Um, like maybe you can't, it like caps your, <laughs> like how fast you go when you're flying through the air. Yeah, is 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 it just me that the the stream is kind of kind of a slideshow? I'm going I'm going back back out and start the stream again because I think I'm like way behind. Well, I mean, let me know. Uh oh, uh, it might be just because I did something. Hang on a second, let me stop this and start it back up. See if that helps it. Uh, let me know if it's if it's better. I switched it to um, 60 FPS. I. <laughs> I don't know if we talked about this last week. Let me know if it's better now. Uh, there is a kind of a weirdness that happened with my normal streaming or my normal uh, capture program. So I oh, switched yeah, yeah, over yeah. to um, OBS to do all my future captures, and I had to set up all these different profiles and stuff. I've been kind of getting to know OBS a little bit better. And By the way, I, I something I, I meant to mention to you, you know, you grabbed a clip for me. I actually haven't looked at that clip yet, but you said you noticed that the blacks weren't perfectly black they were a little grayish yeah well uh, I mean, it just looks like it like in in this if you i mean i'm see i'm noticing it here uh something in obs that I, I meant to mention to you um when you right click on the capture device and go to properties um there's a, a color range right right uh setting i i tend to find that setting that in obs tends to not work very well Okay, well, I set it to, I set it to uh, default, which is just default, what... Default, yeah. Right, and that's the thing. It's like, so my capture card is set to uh, limited. My, my PS TV is set to limited as well. And so by all... Like, everything should match up. Does it have that expand and contract setting that you had access to before? Right, well, I have it set to, set to shrink, which uh -huh. is a setting that will take uh, stuff that is is full and convert it to limited. But it's, it, it only affects things that are, 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 uh, are full. Mm -hmm. So it's set to limited, but if something comes in that's it's full, it won't look off. It will just take the, the full range and convert it to limited. I mean, that's just, I, that's how it well, works. No, I mean, it looks to me like something is going on, but. Right, but I mean, even if like, I, I'm sure I can, do this for you here. I mean, uh, now is not the time to figure it out, but it but seems if, like you, you can tinker a little. So more. if it was set to uh, full, you'll see it. Like, it gets way more washed out. So now it's a mismatch. Well, I mean, even more of a mismatch. But Right, but now it's set to uh, set to partial, which is what it should be, which is the limited, and that I get the same the same situation. Hmm. So I yeah, exact. I mean, no the game is choppy. Yeah. Choppy, it's like a low. Well, I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not your capture device. It's like the whole stream is just kind of lagging. Right. I mean, it's just. I mean, if I go to my settings, like my PS TV is set to. Well, you know, no, I mean, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying the whole like our webcams too. I mean, I'm just saying the stream. Is is having is is struggling? Not not your not your capture. The stream the stream. Uh, I mean it says it's, it hasn't dropped any frames. Uh, my upload is showing a three thousand one hundred seventy six uh, uh, kbs. So, I mean, how much? Uh, three thousand uh, one hundred and seventy-five now. Unless it has something to do with um, something else that I, I mess usually, with. Like I, I mean, my, my, I usually set my uh, my video bit rate for streaming to at least six thousand. So your internet should, in theory, be able to handle that pretty well. Well, it's set to VBR. It's like minimum three thousand, maximum five thousand. Unless they have something to do oh, with like the look ahead. Maybe that's, mode. Yeah, I didn't think you could. I didn't think you were even allowed to stream on VBR. You're uh, not supposed to. 
Okay, well, I guess, I mean, it's, well, I mean, if it looks fine now, let's just see what happens. Well, when, when it, I, well, once the game got going, was when I think it was really starting to get bad. I, I I thought that streaming services didn't allow you to even use VBR anymore. Uh, I mean, I think Twitch stopped Twitch stopped allowing VBR. I mean, I could switch over to to CBR if you want me to. Yeah, it's for six thousand CBR. Well, okay. I guess we'll. I guess we'll. Uh, okay. Hang on. Because as far as I understand, it's definitely considered not good to stream with VBR. 6,000? I do 6,000. Should I use the look ahead or the psycho visual tuning? All this stuff is stuff that I don't even know about. I I think I use those. Okay. Well, then. Uh, should I think those are like, I, I think they sort of are like predictive or something like that. Like, I think they like make a prediction that improves the, you know, the perceived quality of, you know, it, it reduces the effect of macro blocking or whatever, I think. I see. Well, as you can see, there's, it's definitely not an integer scale going on here. It's a, uh... I don't know if that has anything to do with the sharp scale, but there's there's definitely some shimmer going on. Yeah, I mean, it's... You can see it in the grass, specifically, like when I run. I mean, Sonic is a very good game to show this kind of stuff because of the way the, the graphics on the grass look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. This looks a lot better now. Okay. Like a lot better. Oh yeah, well that's good. Okay, I mean, I, but it, but have it's, you it's, been streaming a VBR for all this time? Uh, I don't know if I changed something. Maybe I changed something when I was. You might have changed them because I feel like your streams, like if they looked like if they were, I I don't think you were because, like I remember at some point, uh, you weren't allowed to use VBR on Twitch anymore. So I was surprised you could do it on YouTube. Well, all right, let's, let's see how this goes. So the reason I wanted to play this is because uh, I don't know if, if people know this, but I'm not I'm not a gigantic fan of Sonic 2. I, I love I love 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 the first one. I've played through the first one dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Doesn't I mean probably like more than dozens of times. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember being so excited for this when it came out, and for some reason I just felt like really disappointed by it. And I don't know. Have you ever like, have you ever played through it more than once? Uh, I have only played through the entire game one time. Wow! Uh, I, even was, I've played through it twice. <laughs> well, I mean, I played through it when it when it came out, and that was the only time. And I was just oh, you can really see the shimmer when Robotnik comes comes down. I bet it looks better on PC, but yeah. it's just that streaming on PS TV was more convenient for you. Yeah. I mean, I could do it on the, the PC, but I didn't just wanted something that was more, you know, consoleized, I guess, for right now. Huh, the frame rate's getting pretty choppy again. I wonder if, I, I wonder if your internet's just not in a good state or something. Or it could just be YouTube. Uh, maybe it is. I mean, I mean, the only thing I can think of that would be outside of that is if I go to the advanced settings and I have the, oh, where is it? No, I have the, oh, the video renderer. I had it set to RGB, but for some reason right now it's connected set to NV12, which, uh, is, is, not what it should be, but um, I mean, I don't know. I can well, I can turn off. Why don't I turn off the look ahead mode and see if that helps? Okay. Let's see if that. I doesn't. don't. I mean, it shouldn't do anything, but yeah. Can, can you turn that off while the stream is going? I just did, so we're gonna see what happens. 
Uh, there was a two dollars super chat from uh, Casey Cantwell. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Uh, and I, I, th I think I had to. I, I think I had to tell Casey before that that uh, you can better than you think you can. What? Um, <laughs> Casey Cantwell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, asking uh, if you heard about the upcoming PSP Pro consoleizer. I uh, I uh, have yeah, yeah. of you. Yeah, that's the thing from uh, oh. from that we're gonna. Beginning oh, that's, like that's, the, okay. Okay, I, uh, yeah. from uh, Retro Revolutions. I, yeah. I I I didn't know that that they had a name. I I'm I'm so out of loop sometimes <laughs> 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 on things that I should be directly informed of. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, yes, I am aware of that, and we are going to be able to look at it. Yeah. Okay, so people are saying that it was going better before. I apologize for all this messing around here. We'll see if that helps. I I mean, I think it's just either your internet is being... I mean, I'm not it's, it's saying I'm at 0% drop frames here. Well, it doesn't look like it, so I, don't, I wonder what's going on. Yes, it maybe it has something to do with the encoder. I don't know. The encoder? I mean, yeah. I mean, just like, 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 like maybe I needed to like restart... OBS or something like that after maybe I mean up in that that bit rate. I mean, are you using in in Vink? Uh, yeah, I should be. Yeah, hang on. I'm, uh, I don't know what's going on. I mean, you know, it used to be I always had trouble with streams. Your streams never look like this. I mean, yeah, it's it's showing. I mean. Let's see. Should, should, do you think uh, I should uh, just stop and restart really quick? Yeah, yeah. Close OBS. Totally close OBS. Just. See. Okay. Let's see if this is any better. And there's like there's a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of donations came in. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll see. Uh, hopefully we're back. Let me know if we're back. It looks like we're back. Okay. Let's see if this helps at all. I mean, right now it's smooth. Okay. I mean, I mean, your 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 camera is smooth. But what about the game? Well, hang on. Are you just waiting for it to play? He was like buffering for me. Okay, so Henry Clark's saying it didn't help. I I did restart the whole stream. I mean, I restarted OBS completely. I mean, I can't. Right now, I mean, at the moment, it's going smooth. Okay. So while it's going smoothly, let me do the super chat. Okay. Uh, there was two from Warren Hokey. Thank you. Uh, saying, uh, best underloved handheld and why is it the Nomad? Well, I, I mean, mean, I don't really consider that like a, de yeah, it's not a dedicated handheld. Yeah, it's not like a handheld. platform unto itself. I mean, the it's certainly... It's certainly ah. a very cool uh, thing for for taking uh, your stuff with you. I mean, I think Corey has an answer for it. I well, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna say the Atari Lynx, but uh, I mean, you you got some footage for Analog Frontiers for me of of me playing some Lynx on the uh, on my on my Raspberry Pi. A retro pie. Oh, <laughs> I, I I actually didn't uh, I didn't see that uh, Lynx clips yet. I actually used uh, I mean I'm going to be using more of it, but one that I already in implemented was uh, you play Neo Geo Pocket. Oh yeah, I did that too. But I mean the other one is uh, it's me playing Blue Lightning. Okay, well I'll try to uh, I'll try to find a place because that's Might good do. that you got some of those those weird ones because. I'm not as likely to capture from those platforms as you are. So it's, it's good that you, uh, that you got a few things like that. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, Corey's playing the Vita. I mean, you know, that was obviously not oh, a very wow. successful system. This is, this is super cool. laggy, but this looks pretty good. I mean, it's like a whole thing, but it's like, it's so laggy. It feels like it's moving really slow. But, I but mean, is it like a, is it updating faster or something? Or I mean, updating it, more I mean, it looks fine. I mean, it's probably really easy to <laughs> to, to play now. Hey God, I'm, I'm it's loading the it's but loading it, the it, game right now. I mean, it looks really good. Oh wow! 
<laughs> right? I mean, I've, I've never played this version. Uh, and it's really unfortunate that there was no other ports of this. These versions. This looks amazing. Ever. Yeah, right? It's just like a complete... Uh, it's like built with polygons, it looks like. I mean, it moves pretty slow, but still. You even get a little... If you jump, it kind of the camera kind of pulls up a little bit. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, all right, let me scroll down again. There, there was uh, 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 five dollars from Mitch B. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Saying uh, just tuned in. Missed last week. Love Sonic too. Any chance on checking out Florence? <laughs> uh, I've not checked it out yet. I haven't done much of checking out of anything lately. You can you can count on Mitch B to ensure that you will not forget that. Yes, I promise. <laughs> I just have to find the right moment. <laughs> These stages are going to just take forever, though. At least it's going to be fairly easy. Um... I mean, is there any any downfall to overclocking the Vita or the PS TV? Is it, is it risky? Yeah, I mean, is there? I, I, I've I, I've never liked the idea of overclocking. Like I, yeah. I just I don't mind doing I, it with my PC. I'll do it. I'll do it through my PC if it's just like an option in the BIOS, where it's you know like they I mean, have, they have all PC, the overclocking. I've never done because I'm just like too afraid. Yes, it's, it's, it's going to take forever to do all this. Um, There was uh, $5 from Aaron Welsh saying, uh, uh, these streaming problems will continue until you put Sandy in charge of IT. She's <laughs> kind of dozing off right here. so she um, She's going to the vet tomorrow. Oh, and, man. Uh, you know, last year when she got her her annual vaccines, she like, she had not have a good reaction. Uh, you know, there's, there, you know, there, there's always like, you know, the, the, the reaction that you're, you know, supposed to be really worried about is if they get like a, you know, a puffy face or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that happened to one of my cousin's dogs once uh, that didn't happen to her, but she just like threw up like six times in an <laughs> hour or two. Like she was just puking all over the place. And I ended up taking her back and uh, to the vet, you know, just make sure she was okay. But uh, they recommended uh, giving her uh, a Benadryl tonight, a Benadryl tomorrow. They have, they have dog the... Benadryl? No, I mean, just give her, I mean, I've got Benadryl. Uh, just one 25 milligram Benadryl tablet. Uh they said, give her Benadryl, you know, tonight uh, and tomorrow and then have Pepsi AC on hand. Because <laughs> she just did not react well to it last time. So it'll be fun tomorrow. Can't even see that coming. I, You know what? I cannot fight the boss in this game without thinking of Generation 16. So Greg Sewer, if if you're watching this, you you have won. You have won. You, like I don't even associate your theme music with Sonic 2 anymore. I think of Generation 16. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, there is uh, two dollars from Game Toy Collector. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, who has who has a, a question that sounds somewhat related to? their username uh saying ever played with the sony xperia play phone no uh i have not i i kind of forgot about that what didn't it have like ps1 emulation or something like that on it like or it didn't have like a slide out like playstation buttons or something like a like a psp go maybe almost i forget yeah i don't remember i do well yeah, kind of a little I've... bit like not like a PSP Go, but me. Uh, I don't know. I know what you're like talking about, but thing. you know, obviously it didn't make a very big splash. Uh, I, I don't. 
I don't remember <laughs> much about right off the top of my head. So if uh, I spin dash, I should theoretically survive the whole time. Yeah. There was uh, there was also uh, five pounds from Broken Sticks. Thank you. Thank Saying, you. Uh, have you guys read about the Chris Whitehead zoomed out Sonic versions that just came out? No, that sounds cool though. No, I mean personally, I, I, I mean that sounds interesting for Sonic because if you could see like the whole level, that that would that would be interesting. But like, I've never really liked the aesthetic of like super zoomed out pixel games because that's like that's not how real retro games were you know yeah so when i see like you know these you know all these indie games that have like the super little sprite characters and stuff and it's just like it doesn't it doesn't feel i don't know it's it's not it's not the look i'm looking for uh you know, like the 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 harmony of despair aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting, but it's not my thing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's definitely interesting to see that it's possible. See, one of the things I just you know a lot of people a lot of people like this soundtrack better than than this first one, but I think the soundtrack in the first one is a lot better. I just I just like everything about the first game more than this one. I, I, I understand that that is a very unpopular opinion. But what can I say? Well, I mean, I, I, I like the first one better too, but uh, you know, I'm... I, and you feel that the... the I'm kind of an anti-sonic thing. Huh? Right? You, you feel that the third one is just is too long. Oh, it's way too long. It's way too long. Like the, I see, I almost felt like that this was almost getting to be too long. I mean, Sonic Three on its own is actually pretty short, but like if if you play the whole thing, you know, with with and Knuckles, like it's just it's just obnoxiously long, uh, and it just it's really frustrating. Like. I, I feel that Sonic is just not easy to learn for people who did not grow up, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, for some people, it's just second nature. It's like me and Mario 64, you know? It's just like, that game is so completely perfect in my head, and I cannot, I, I like... I, I cannot get myself into a state of mind where I can, like, even comprehend not believing that everything <laughs> about the way that game plays is, is beautiful and wonderful. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm sure that, you know, the hardcore Genesis Sonic fans who, you know, grew up playing them, you know, that, that was, you know, I'm sure it's something like that. Yeah. Uh, there was $2 from BF0189. Uh, saying, uh, thank you. Are, are you folks looking forward to sh Cyber Shadow? I'm not familiar with what oh, that is. Oh, is that? I, mean, I saw a lot of people talking about that today. It looks pretty cool, but I don't. I, I saw some, some talk on Twitter about it. Is, it. is it close to coming out? What is it? I feel like it's kind of like a Ninja Gaiden type looking game. Oh, okay. Kind of like. Um... <laughs> Onikin. Yeah. I like the, I like the tails drown like way before before I did. <laughs> I mean, in a lot of ways, I just feel that the existence of tails in this game is just essentially pointless. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, like, tails does I'll... nothing. Honestly. Basically, but uh I prefer Tails as a character to Sonic. Like, I mean, in any given, uh, you know, game where they actually give you the option to play as Tails only. Mm -hmm. You'll take I, Tails. I, 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 I generally prefer to play Tails. I'm pretty sure when Drum and I played Sonic 3 and Knuckles, we 
did whatever we could to ensure Sonic had no part in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess Tails, Tails is, is useful, like, during, in the third game, I felt, because Tails takes a lot of hits for you. Hmm. Uh, there was also uh, two dollars from from old Dustin Kramer. Thank you. Was just saying, uh, evening. Just a way to send some money, love your way. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Come on. Oh, whew. I thought I was done for. Uh, there was five dollars from Jose Romero. Thank you. Saying the new Pocky and Rocky game is zoomed out, and I know you guys love that live games. Well, I'm definitely going to get it. Zoomed yeah. out or not zoomed out? I, I've not seen pictures of it. Is is that just an option or is that just how it is? I mean, I don't mind a little extra field of view, yeah. but I'm talking like super zoomed out. Like I'm not, I'm not Do too into to that. Continue? Please let me. Con I mean, but I'm definitely going because I mean, I, I've loved everything that that team has done with with those 16-bit Natsume revivals. Uh, their work is so good. Um, so I, I'll I'll definitely play it no matter what. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 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 oh, Warren Hokey with another $2. Uh, thank you. Saying uh, unpopular opinion. Sonic for Master System Game Gear is best. Ah. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree. I have not finished the Master System one, uh, but I played a good bit of it, and I kind of appreciate how it's more of a um, more of a platform. Yeah, like it's it's more it's more you know a lot of people I'm like that Nintendo use a kid. Kishiro it's, soundtrack too. It, uh, it it feels it feels more like just like a regular paced platformer that you know that I'm more used to play. Um, you know, it's more about you know precision jumping and taking your time. It's at it, some points, you know. Uh, I I kind of prefer that. I just feel like stuff like that, where okay, you you have to just like know it's coming. Like, this foreground is pretty bad in this level. The foreground, like, it doesn't feel like it moves correctly. I don't know. Like, I actually, that. the foreground stuck moving at the same speed as the background? Uh, maybe. Uh, there was uh, five dollars from uh, P. A. Felton. Thank you. Uh, uh, saying uh, Knuckles is just ripping off Bubsy's gliding mechanic. <laughs> you know. See, like stuff like that would just happen there. Okay. It just it seems like there's just things there that are designed to like make you stop. You know, like the only way you'd ever know is if like this enemy pops out and hits you. You know, like, you don't even know it's coming. And I feel like that that's... Yeah, I mean... A, an obnoxious thing about Sonic games, maybe post one... Sonic games where they focus on... Where the, the speed was the point, I guess. Because right. a lot of and people say, oh, the, the first game. one, like, has a lot of things. And, like, same... same see, ugh. That, See, a, lo a lot of people think that, like, Marble Zone is, like, the anti-Sonic world, you know? Where, you know, there's a lot of pushing boxes, and there's a lot of things that slow your pace down, but I actually kind of like that. Um, I mean, if you know your way through Sonic levels, you know, if you really, really knew, know just how to, how to play them, have them memorized by heart... Like, I'm sure that they are a blast to play through uh, because the way that they are designed is actually really cool. But I, I do think they are frustrating for someone who, you know, is, is not as used to the, the level designs. Yeah. Oh, uh, here's a contentious one. Uh, Jonathan Henson with $2. Shmups, shoot em ups mm -hmm. or shooters? Uh, I'll say I know, shooters. I know Corey, Corey kind of has a pretty hard answer on this now. Yeah, definitely, now, de definitely shooters. 
I see. I I I I go with schmuck because I, I know you don't like it, but to me, it is clearer what you're talking about when you say that. I, I mean, Contra's a shooting game. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it's a Golden but, Eye. But is you'll a shooting hear, game. but but Contra, like, is but, but that's not. I don't think that that's like an accurate way to think of them as. Because, I mean, you know, like shooting, shooting game means, I mean, what it does mean, what it does mean is, you know, you're, you're, you're in a spaceship or similar flying thing and you're shooting bullets at enemies, but that's, but, the, but that's, that's what they've traditionally been called. And, you know, in like, Japan, I mean, I, I don't oh, know. I, I definitely I, call I, them I feel, shooters. I here. feel it's unclear, especially if you're talking to someone who, you know, maybe isn't as... You know, that, no, that sounds like. That sounds like the answer somebody that only really read Nintendo Power <laughs> would get. <laughs> well, it sounds like the answer of someone who's the only schmup that they've ever even beaten is Life Force. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I just... It'll always be shooter to me, you know, and just like uh, first person shooters, you know, it's it's very convenient that first person shooters have FPS. Like back in the day, they were called FPS, but that was just like frames per second. Like that's like, I, I think that's a myth. I don't know. It was it is not. It is not. a myth. I think that's a myth that that I, I think that's absolutely it's not, it's, a myth. it is not a myth because I lived it. Because other... I remember in you, IRC chat rooms... You thought, people, you, that's what people... Maybe some people were confused, but that was never what it was originally meant to be. There's no way. There is no way. Because other games ran at high frame rates, too. But it was not a, like a priority for those games the way it was with, mm -hmm. with Doom and, and Quake I, and stuff. I think you and your friends were confused. I, I think know. it may have been a common thing for people to be confused, but there is no way that the uh, Scoot, origin Scoot of Scoot Diggity says confused. not a myth. I think, I mean, I, 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 I think y'all were, I'm not saying that people didn't call it that for that reason, but I think they were wrong within their own time. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was, like the, where I, when I first heard about it, like when I first heard it, it was in uh, like like first person shooters w w weren't even called first person shooters at the time. Well, like do, like I mean, Doom was not referred to it, or like I don't think like the term first person shooter was even used uh, for those. But, and it's just so it just ended up being convenient. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, like I find it pretty meaningless to debate about genres that much because I mean, what even is a genre anymore? I mean, even <laughs> back in the day, I think, uh, you know, genre labels are, are pretty weird. Like, you know, we've had this debate on the backloggery before, you know, apparently a lot of people think it's pretty weird that I would consider Castlevania, Contra, like I would consider those platforms. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I don't think, I, d d does your, does your character have to be a cartoon and do you have to jump on enemies for it to be a platformer? I don't think that's what defines a platformer. It's right. It's but I mean, 2D, it's like, it's 2d it's side scrolling and you jump on platforms. The fact that you, the fact that your weapon is more violent than Mario's weapon doesn't suddenly make it not a platformer. It, it becomes an action game. Mario is also an action game, but it's a platformer. Right. I I, I, I think it's silly to think. I mean, apparently it's a, it's, a, it's a weird thing to think, but I don't understand why it would be silly to think of of them as, as a platform. Doesn't seem silly to me at all. But genres <laughs> are genres are pretty pointless. The the I mean the, the the name adventure game for you know like you know point and click adventure games and uh, text adventure games and 
you know, anything like that. Like that's, I don't think that's all that good of a description of what those games are either. Like the, yeah. those well, are I mean, not, like Contra and stuff, like it's like, I mean, those are action adventures. So, but, but they're, if, but they're running guns. Well, yeah, but more broad, I, I, more, they absolutely are running guns, but like more broadly, like that is a more, you know, that's like Metal Gear is tactical espionage action. You know, it's, 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 it's getting a little more specific, but the broader genre, I think most people will call them action adventure rather than platformer. But I would say that they have more in common with Mario than they have in common with Shadowgate. You know, Shadowgate is an adventure. Monkey Island is an adventure, mm -hmm. which again, I don't particularly like that label for those kinds of games. I like to say maybe point and click adventure. You know, uh, I think that's a little more clear of what what it is but the genres are stupid i mean they are i mean <laughs> what you know <laughs> genres are stupid well everything is so like it, especially now it gets melded together any anyway. everything like, like, like has i mean a little bit of rpg in it, exactly you know? exactly i mean th so does that mean that every game that has rpg elements are they all action rpgs now or what yeah, exactly. If I can just go real slow, whoop! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I doing the the flip over, and it's like whoa. Uh, there was uh, <laughs> there there were uh, ten Swiss francs from David Aaron. Thank you. Oh, thank uh, you. Saying take my Corona infested Swiss money. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I I don't know much about how Switzerland's doing right now, but it it, it certainly couldn't be <laughs> any worse than. Uh, than uh, than here, I wouldn't think. <laughs> I mean, I I know our by the by the raw numbers at least. But you know, your money is is virtual, so <laughs> no no risk here. So thank you. Uh, and Lumia Projections also joined as a member. Oh, welcome. I, this is way easier when it goes like a quarter of the oh, speed. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I've, I've never gotten all the Chaos Emeralds in any Sonic game. Oh, really? I, I mean, I mean for the first one I have, but... I, I know there's a lot of Sonic fans out there who, like, couldn't even imagine, like, finishing the game without getting them all. But just, like, that, just that alone is enough for me. <laughs> uh uh there was all, another uh 10 10 francs from uh, david aaron again thank you thank saying you. uh fps games were called doom likes mm. and we all secretly know they should still be called that <laughs> i mean yeah i don't disagree i mean you know there's roguelikes is like this is a whole yeah. big genre today why not stick with doom like and as, or as metroid a, metroid like you know as, i mean i am your end video i said wonder boy likes yeah, because now true. it's like yeah. a thing. I mean that. I still that, can't. I mean, that's, you know, oh, that's not it. a bad way to describe oh. things. I mean, I tend to use the, I do tend to use the word Metroidvania, even though I know a lot of people hate that. I don't think Corey's a huge fan. Mm. Um, but I prefer, I, I, I prefer Castle Royd. Castle Royd. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's fairly <laughs> really. descriptive of you know. I mean, people more or less know what you're talking about when yeah. You, when you say that and that's i think the the most important thing is is to be clear when you know you know i i, I i'm still just not that convinced that shooting game is all that clear but i mean like it may not be to you now but it certainly was in the back in the day Because, I mean, I think any game, you know, any game that has bullets as a primary uh, method of uh, you dispensing of enemies and them dispensing of you, uh, you know, could be a shooting game. And but like the whole little little ship shooter. Is like a, it's, how about you? That's, that's a good one. A ship shooter. A ship shooter. I mean, that's what they are. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's kind of a good. That's a good description. That's a good. Well, that's a good I, genre I, I name. A ship shooter. Come up with it, but let's let's start a trend. 
Let's, let's get on the ship shooter train. Uh oh. Shoot. Well, it crashed. Oh. Hopefully Ooh, we can. We'll find out to play Casino Night Zone again. Maybe that's the only. That's as far as you can uh, can get in this version. It did crash. I mean, it certainly is expected. Yeah. Oh, I, I yeah. Well, it's just like continuing right from Casino Night Zone. So we'll see what we we'll oh, do again. Oh, that's cool. Uh, there was $5 for, for the love of the game saying it's uh, fascinating how camera mechanics factor into genre names. First person, third person, horizontal, vertical scrolling, single screen, etc. Yeah, I mean, I, some of those like single screen, I don't know if I've really heard people necessarily refer to that as the genre name all that much, but um, horizontal, vertical scrolling shooters for sure. Uh, you know, it's so interesting to me. You know, I think we've had this conversation before. I, I get the impression that the, like the really hardcore shmup fans prefer vertical shooters. And uh, well, vertical I, are certainly more popular, but I feel like in the 16 bit years, uh, horizontal were definitely more popular then. I, I mean, I almost feel like th there's an element of uh, I, don't, I don't what's 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 the word I, I want uh, I'm think, thinking of I, I don't know like do they just like it because it's different you know it it's 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 not entirely unique to the genre but it is is a feature that is more common probably in that genre than in other arcade genres. You know, is it is it like you know? I I, I I I just don't know. Like to me, I prefer horizontal in large part because it's it's not going to be anything weird when I'm playing it at home. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's uh, uh, you know, it's just it's easier to play at home. Although I'm really interested in uh. Didn't Marcus say that one of the features of the OSSC Pro is going to be like a mode for scaling uh, vertical games uh, on your monitor in its normal horizontal configuration? Uh, uh, that would be that would be a pretty awesome feature. Yeah, I, th I think I heard something about that. But don't quote me on that. Uh, I mean, but again, I don't, I don't play a lot of games like that, but it's definitely, uh, definitely a cool feature. Uh, by the way, in the in the chat, uh, people will have to tell me uh, if the Buffalo Bills are going to the Super Bowl tonight. Oh, whenever, are they playing they... tonight for well, yeah. on the line? Yeah. So, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's going well, but I mean, <laughs> we'll see. I feel, I, I, I would have watched, but I feel like it's going to, with Jinx, with Jinx it. Mm. I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit last week, or maybe yeah. I talked about it recently, about how I kind of stopped watching because I feel like as soon as I start watching, then the team that I want to win starts losing. <laughs> There was uh, two dollars from Colin McLaughlin. Thank you, uh, saying uh, ever thought about redoing or updating the RGB videos. That's, that's kind of what the RGB two hundred series is for. Like we did that with the GameCube stuff, and we did that with um, like the Game Boy IPS screens last year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are kind of serve as a function to update them, but like. I, I, I just I feel like it would just be really it just it wouldn't be fun for us at all to like totally remake those. I mean I, I understand that people kind of want them, but like I just I, I just I just don't think they'd be very fun for us to do. <laughs> yeah, we'd rather do just com like like update videos, like follow ups. Yeah, more what's what's new, what's different. Yeah, you know, but those will be three hundred rather than two hundred videos. I mean. You know, 
some some of you know some of some of the 200 level videos are less relevant than others at this point for sure uh but uh, it's just i don't know remaking those like it just I, I don't know who knows like one day maybe i could i could get myself in the right mindset where i wouldn't hate doing that <laughs> But it doesn't sound like a lot of fun right now. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that, you know, definitely look for updates on certain subjects in the 300 series for sure. Uh, there's $5 from uh, Tenchi Ruya. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, saying game all the emeralds in Sonic 3 and Knuckles is one of the most frustrating things ever, in my opinion. <laughs> I, I, I don't doubt it. I mean, I certainly never tried. Uh, I, I I think just finishing Sonic 3 and Knuckles is annoying enough. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest. I know that's not a popular opinion. You know what's so interesting is I, I feel like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, I feel like Sonic 2 was the fan favorite. And now I feel like Sonic 3 is the fan favorite. Oh, definitely. And I, I think a big part of that is because it's yeah. less widely available now, too. Do you think, I mean, but, but, but like, I'm not crazy that they're like, it, it feels like there's been a shift, right? It was always Sonic 2. Sonic 2 was always the fan favorite. Well, now, I always thought it was like, like Sonic 2 oh. and Knuckles or Sonic 3 and Knuckles was considered like the fan favorite. I, 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 I did. I was not under that impression, you know, back like when these games were coming out on virtual console. I was under the impression too was the, or even well before then. I was for a very long time under the impression that two was the fan favorite. So I, I are 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 the three and knuckles fans just more vocal these days? Or did something actually change? Like maybe maybe the people who said Sonic Two was the best are, you know, the people who haven't kept up with retro gaming, so they're not the people that are talking anymore. The people who have kept up with it are the people who love Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I, I don't, and so we just hear them more often. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I played Sonic 3. I think I was playing Sonic 3 Complete on a previous stream. And uh, it was, it, I, I'd never really played it beyond uh, just a couple of, um, like, like just trying it out here and there. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. There's uh, $2 from Gaming Blows. Thank you. Saying uh, Blasphemous, best Metroidvania of the last five years. Uh, I, are you are you saying you want us to have a Blasphemous opinion on that? Or the name of the game? is Blasphemous sounds like a familiar name of a game. Is that, is that, that, that that's a game? Oh yeah, yeah. I have the I have the Switch version. I got it from Limited Run a long time ago. What uh? Let's help, what, let's see what, what? Please don't crash this time. I don't want to play this. Game? Uh, it's supposed to be like it's pretty well regarded. It says Metroidvania. I mean, so, is it like is it? I thought it, I, I thought it looked kind of yeah, but it looks very like Dark Souls Souls ish, like very like maybe like Salt and Sanctuary. Oh okay, I have crash. Salt and Sanctuary. Please don't crash. Please save my game. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if it crashes again, just play Sonic 1. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can't remember that. I I'm going to look it. You going to look it up? I'm going to look it up. Uh... So Souls-like Vania. Souls like thing. Yeah, isn't that what Salt and Sanctuary is kind of like? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I mean, I, uh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I got Salt and Sanctuary, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what it was, but I guess I. I looked at this one and thought, eh. I mean,. Usually the key words I'm looking for when a limited run game or, you know, from any of those companies uh, becomes available, like, okay, does it say anything about procedural generation 
Does it yeah. say anything about being a roguelike? If not, then I don't usually look at it too hard. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, not not that there can't be good games in those genres, you know, but it's it's just not my thing. Uh, there are certainly roguelike games I've been interested in. I mean, I, I know it's a super basic example, but I did like Chocobo's Dungeon on the Wii. Is it just the stream compression or is the shield like actually like a transparency effect in this version? Uh, when it gets back to it again, I'll let you know. I feel like it kind of on the stream, it, it looks like it is, but I don't know if it's just the compression. Come on. Sorry. Whew. We'll see. I mean, I. You don't get shields nearly as much in this one, it seems like. Um, I, I'm scrolling down a bit. I see uh, P.A. Felton asking, uh, speaking of Wonder Boy likes, have either of you played Hollow Knight? I would argue that it's a Metroidvania Souls-like. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've heard a lot of people. I, I have it. I, I, I mean, I've I played like two minutes of it. Um, yeah. I, I haven't properly started it yet. Uh, I, I always did hear people seem to refer to it as sort of a Souls-like game. I, I never heard it referred to as like Metroid-like. Or I'm a Wonder Boy-like, I mean. Although Wonder Boy does have Metroid-esque elements in it for sure. Or at least the Monster World subseries. Oh, uh, yeah, it's definitely a transparent effect. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it is not flashing. Oof, I thought I was dead there. Um, trying to. Oh, Zane's dad joined as a member. Thank ah, you. Welcome. Oh, Zane's dad's also in our the patron as well. Yeah. Doubling, doubling up, <laughs> or maybe switching from one to the other. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, for some weird reason, uh, um, I, I can't scroll all the way back up in the chat. I guess it's just being really active right now or something. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. My, watch before. the game glitch in just a second. Huh? Uh, when I die, the game just glitched. Did, did it freeze? No. Or is it? I just fell through the floor. Oh, well, hang on, I'm I'm watching. Whatever, you know. It's... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me know if I missed any uh, any super chats before this uh, fifteen. Swiss francs from David Aaron. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Saying, uh, since you just did the pinball level, what are your favorite pinball video games? I love Devil Crush, Kirby Pinball, and the more recent Demon's Tilt. A shame the Sonic one was not so good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I you know, I guess my favorite is Kirby's Pinball Land. Um, although, you know, I've always kind of been a, I've always kind of been an apologist for pinball on the NES. Uh it uh it it just does not seem to be a very popular game but like i don't know as far as black box nes games go i mean most of those aren't that good in my opinion uh <laughs> so i i think it's fine you know it was it was a game that it, it was a game that uh i i had that and uh, i forget if it was Fazanadu or something else or Mar oh, Marble Mad Madness maybe because my cousin really la liked Fazanadu so I don't think she would have left that that at my house intentionally <laughs> I was like I, th I think like Fazanadu and Zelda 2 were her favorite games so she probably wouldn't have left that at my house but she left uh, Marble Madness and Pinball at my house for like so long that I was kind of like 
unsure if they were supposed to be like mine now <laughs> <laughs> or if I was just borrowing them. But I had I had my cousin's copies of Pinball and Marvel Madness for a really long time. <laughs> I eventually got my own Marvel Madness, so I, I must have only been borrowing that one. But Pinball... Yeah, I... I like I just I had it as you know I had my cousin's copy as a kid for so long, I liked playing it every now and then. I think it's fine. I played um, uh, when I was doing the EverDrive episode. I spent a bunch of time playing Devilish, which is a pinball game. It was pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's that's is that Turbo Graphics one? I play. It was on the Game Gear that I was playing. So I think it's like Master System. Oh Gear. okay. I think I know which one you're talking about though. Or, um, you know, speaking of pinball games, I. I I kind of discovered recently. Well, maybe it's on the uh, Genesis. I, maybe, maybe it is on the Genesis. Because I use the music. But I feel like I played it on the uh, on the Game Gear. Um, uh, this is you know, definitely I, I running kinda, at half speed. It might be running at even a quarter speed, honestly. I, I kind of um, discovered recently, and b both of us got it. Um, Yoku's Island Express. Right, right. Um, yeah, I ordered a copy of that too after you talked about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you can get a physical copy for pretty cheap on Amazon. It's like, it like $15 or something like that. 14 dollars Yeah, and it's uh it's pretty cool. It's uh it's a it's a, it's like a pinball Metroidvania. Uh I I'm looking forward to playing through that. Uh I mean, it sounds very It, it kind of caught me by surprise when I played the demo. I was like, "Oh, so that's what this is." Uh, if I wanted to overclock the PS TV, like how do I do it? Can I do it with the uh, the graphics, the Vita graphics program? Come on, am I really gonna up that short? Yep. <laughs> Scrolling down, but Dustin Kramer said, uh, "Corey, how many CRTs do you have in your house, and how does your wife feel about it?" <laughs> uh, I don't know. We just don't, we don't talk about it. <laughs> I, I haven't brought any additional ones into the house in many many years at this point i mean i definitely have a lot more than Corey has yeah and Sa sandy doesn't say anything about it so <laughs> 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 like but see like i probably have like 30 some things in the house that oh. qualify as crts but like look behind me like see in the in the upper right corner like that's just like a loose little like three or four inch tube that like i pulled out of some machine at my uh previous yeah, works come. science department like i mean it doesn't work you know i've got i've got like a bunch of like uh arrays of um uh in fact there's one right uh, above me, if I pull my camera down a bit, uh, oh, see, there's a man. There's like you know, like a like a, a, a like a preview mod, like little black and white preview modders for like TV studio. Um, you know, over again. that you know, I, I don't even think they work. Um, so like, does that really qualify as a CRT I own? I don't know. <laughs> but like if you if you count if you count things that are purely decorative CRTs, <laughs> I yeah, probably do. I, mean, have, I, I have no decorative CRTs. <laughs> I have decorative CRTs. You better believe it. <laughs> I mean, some of them get so used so infrequently that they may as well be decorative CRTs. But you never know when they might come in handy. Uh, there guess. was uh, there was five pounds from Broken Sticks. Thank you. Thanks. Saying uh, most hated Sonic Badnik is is that is that an official name? Yeah, for oh yeah, it's definitely an official name. Badniks? I've never heard that before. Yeah, I mean, at, that's... Fir at first I thought maybe that was like like a like a very British term for like you know I I, I think a common one in Britain <laughs> it m might be baddies. Because the first time I heard that term was in the Donkey Kong Country instruction manual, so I've always assumed that's kind of a British thing, baddies. But but then I was like, oh, like 
Robotnik, Badnik. I I never I never heard that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'll always, but, uh, I'm always going to call him Robotnik. My crow, I, crow thing from Spring Yard Zone. It rolls up into a ball and follows you and stops randomly sometimes. Spooky. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't like anything in Sonic that has spikes yeah. in places that confuse me as to whether it's okay to jump on or not. <laughs> Like Sonic, that that's 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 one of my biggest complaints about Sonic compared to Mario. I've 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 said it many times, but like in Mario, does it have spikes on top? Does it is it on fire? Does it have sharp pointy teeth? If so, do not jump on it. If not, jump on it. Yeah. Like it's pretty straightforward. And Sonic. Oh, I don't know. Good job, Tails. Is it spiky? Maybe don't jump on it, but maybe also jump on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I feel that the game design language of Sonic is not as clear as Mario. Uh, Carrie Dolan Jr. is saying the renaming of Dr. Robotnik to Eggman or something just irrationally infuriates me. I, well, I, 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 I agree. I, I, think I it's just so agree. Stupid. Is, is a person who doesn't particularly like Sonic all that much. I also agree. Uh, I, I much prefer Robotnik to, Egg, to Eggman. Yeah, and, and they use Robotnik in the in the movie. I haven't seen it yet, but they did use Robotnik in the movie, didn't they? The name Robotnik in the movie. Yeah. Which I I feel that that is that is good and proper. Yeah. Um, I'm having a hard time catching up on the, on the super chats. I mean, I don't know. It just goes to show you how closely I've fo I've followed Sonic, which is to say <laughs> that I have not followed him closely at all. Uh, hey, hey, you know, I don't know why I just thought of this. But I, I remember seeing a video <laughs> where someone had modded out uh, Robotnik's glasses in Sonic 2006. <laughs> like, it, you, like, see his, like, human eyes. Like, <laughs> it's very unsettling. Is that, is, does he look, like, more human in that one? Is that why? Uh, I guess a little more human, but, like, if I recall correctly, like he appears to have like modeled, like at least I don't know if he necessarily has eyeballs, but I, he has like definitely like modeled like crevices or creases <laughs> for his, for his, you know, eyes. Whereas in most games, like his shades, like basically are his eyes. Right, right, they're right. so close to his skin, you know, there doesn't need to be eyes. Yeah. Speaking of which, that kind of reminds me. Did, did anyone see that video of uh, that that like sort of lifelike 3D animation of the uh, the shopkeeper from Link: The Faces of Evil? No. Uh, John John linked it in our group chat this weekend. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's kind of amazing, actually. I, I'll, uh, I'll there was uh, five dollars from Attack of the Zack. Thank you. Uh, saying, I uh, just want to send my love to you guys. This Sonic song will be played uh, played at the moment my future wife walks down the aisle. By the the Mystic the... Mystic Zone. Mystic Zone. Well, uh, when uh, when our friends uh, Drum and Lynn got uh, got married, uh, gosh, how long... <laughs> it's gonna have been like two years ago. Weirdly enough. Yeah. Pretty soon, isn't it? Yep. And it feels like because because of the pandemic, it feels like it feels like recently because it was like one of the last times many of us got together, right? Oh, what, what did I just do? I got to the hidden palace zone. Is this like a, is this like a hidden level? Oh, I think that the, I think that they uh, wasn't there a 
Like, a, like an well, unfinished no, level or something? That was cut from the original version that was like reinstated to later versions, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. Right? Or he hasn't been reinstated until this version. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that... That know a lot more about this than us, yeah. Yeah. When, when, uh, when Drum and Lin... Uh, Unfortunately, uh, it's another water level. <laughs> when uh, John and Lin got married, uh, Lin walked down the aisle to... Um, it was it was an Earthbound theme. Ah, oh, that's right. I, yeah. I do remember that. And, uh, and they played the Dragon Quest main theme, like, you know... After they... What after they were actually married? Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so he did. Re Christian Christian Roy had restored this level. I mean, is there any specific way? I, like, the way that I accessed it is that the only pit you can fall down to get to it? Was it just good luck that you found yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> I fell down the death pit. So does this just mean it's... Does, it, does the data for this exist anywhere outside or, or prior to this? Did it exist anywhere outside of Sonic? Like, or outside of Sega? Like, could you... Could you find bits of this in, like, the original game code or something? Yeah, that's... <sighs> Come on, dead. No. Oh! I thought, I thought it was... All these things were places where I think I'm gonna die end up leading to like nice little bonuses. Um, there was uh, five dollars uh, for, for the love of the game, saying uh, if you like pinball, play Necronomicon on Saturn. Ah. Soundtrack is by Dream Theater. Man, that 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 is a name that I have not thought of, and I can't tell you how long. Like I, I am not a knowledgeable person on pop music and the only reason I even know that name is because one of my earliest internet friends uh was like super obsessed with them. <laughs> I was like, oh I think I think I think you'd like them. It, it kind of sounds like video game music. So, some of it anyway, I guess. But uh <laughs> he was like super into them. And gosh, I, I probably have not seen or thought of that name Dream Theater and I'm trying to figure like, out how to fight like like 15 what, years. What a silly idea! Like that, this robotic has a, it's got a giant trombone <laughs> <laughs> trombone on his on his uh, vehicle. That's funny. What a, what a, what a brilliant <laughs> a mass a, ma a master stroke of brilliance right here. <laughs> How do I even? I, I, don't, I don't know how I hit him. I love it. Don't I have to jump right here to? Ah, uh, uh, Zane's dad uh, with five dollars saying, uh, "Yes, I doubled up. Didn't realize the difference between Patreon and YouTube member actually." And Corey is right. Sonic One is better. Oh well, yeah. I see, I see uh, game, GameStack is in the chat, and I think that he would agree with me as well. I think that that's a, a, oh, that's something we've talked about before. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're all in agreement here. Okay, that's okay. Interesting. So there's a little bit more to fighting this time. Well, I, I wonder if it's a newly designed fight or if it's based yeah, well, on I mean, it's what the trick. original was supposed to be. The uh, tr trombone Robotnik. <laughs> there was uh, $5 from uh, EB Chill 2 saying uh, just dropping in to say hi and hope you had a good week. It was, it was a busy week. I mean, I, 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 I didn't get as far into editing as I hoped to this week because I spent so much time gathering emulation material yeah you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will be very happy that there's you know there's dolphin and pcsx2 and pppsspp <laughs> which by the way the pppsspp was my favorite of the 3d system emulators i tried i i i thought it it ran the best on my equipment and um had the best 
frankly, I thought had the best interface of any of the unofficial emulators. Um, you know, I was I was kind of about to throw my computer out the window uh, dealing with RetroArch until I got uh, I got on call with with Drum to walk me through some of some of the frustrations of uh, <laughs> even though he said he set up on this computer a long time ago, but uh, you know, actually getting the settings to stick, you kind of have to do things in a very specific way sometimes and yeah you were not, you were not organized a good day. should be but you know for, for people who are very used to it though it's it's great but uh, you know i was on drum i said uh i said you know i kind of have enjoyed these standalone emulators i've used like dolphin and pcsx2 and PPSS PP, um better and he said yeah, you're you're not alone there's a lot of people who uh are, are very harumphy about retro arch. Yeah, I mean it's just like th right. things can get screwed up really easily. I mean I talked to you about this a lot before, and I think that it was you spending all this time with retro arch that day kind of drove home just how much easier Mister is to use in yeah. just about every I, way. I do agree, but I'm sure emulator people, a lot of emulator people would disagree, and that's that's valid. You know, that, I mean, there's a there's a lot you can do, and a lot you can customize and retroarch, and I mean, you know, and obviously there's more filters and stuff, and I and you know, I I don't know if you would have that. At least it would probably be more on a per emulator basis, like uh, whether you would have access to a lot of the like the the, the shaders and stuff like that. So like having access to shaders and stuff in a unified environment is is nice. Yeah. And I found an interpolation shader that I thought worked pretty well. So I, I captured most footage using that. Um, but I was really frustrated at first. To be fair, one of the frustrations is kind of my fault because I usually use the Wii U Pro Controller on uh, on uh, the computer and but it's essentially an X input controller and A, B, X, Y are in the correct positions, but the reverse from Xbox, which is, you know, so the locations of functions are sometimes a little backwards. Uh, and, you know, sometimes configuring my controller got very confusing, uh, especially when I couldn't figure out why is my controller config not sticking. And that was one of the things Drum had to help me with. And I was so annoyed until we got that straightened out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sonic and Mega Man, we we both played through uh, Shovel Knight. Uh, uh, we did we did a, a how to beat video on it, like right when it came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like right when it came out. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan G with two dollars, thank you, saying uh, please make a video about retro gaming on a budget. Um, I mean, I think. You can definitely take bits and pieces of various things we've covered. That could be a fun. Um, that could be a fun you know, episode, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it would be good to put all that stuff in one place. I mean, you know that that subject comes up, in, you know, in fact, Voltar says it. Uh, you know, uh, talking about you know emulation in general. You know, like uh, some of some of these you know smaller emulator boxes i mean they are great for gaming on a budget yeah you know so that's you know kind of a, a bit of part of analog frontiers part three um you know just examining all the ways to play uh, to play without access to the original hardware uh, that 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 is ah. the main topic of analog frontiers part three I think I'm almost caught up. <laughs> uh, what is the name of this of that music based on the game you played? And oh, uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts is the music based game, which I think is on sale from like Best Buy today. I think I saw that on on Twitter. 
Uh, th this is not the next super chat, but I see uh, Kay Hurlin in the chat saying, I know a lot of people ask about future RGB 200 videos a lot, but are you guys considering doing 200 videos on original Xbox or the PSP at all? And yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, I, I kind of wanted to do PSP years ago. Yeah. Um, but it just it kind of fell on the back burner. The, you know, the the sharp scale is kind of like an interim 200 video for yeah. There's there's some for basic that, or stuff an interim in there. video for that, but it is is not meant to replace a proper 200 video for PSP. I mean, I would probably do PSP and Vita in the same episode. That was my plan originally. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I would I for sure uh, want to do PSP and and Xbox as well. Xbox I feel like is one of the consoles that we feel like in a lot of ways it's simple, but we also feel kind of unprepared for it. What the heck? I think in large part because so much of the Xbox scene revolves around soft hacking, Whoa. which we which we've both done. But I also Thanks, feel like Dale. there's so much we don't know necessarily about like what you can achieve with it. And I don't know anything about RGB on Xbox. Um, you know, I, I I've only really used component with Xbox. I do know that cheap. Uh, component cables on xbox look worse than cheap component cables on other systems <laughs> um from, from my experience um and you know too i think the backwards compatibility factor of you know the the current xbox consoles uh you know makes xbox backwards compatibility an, an interesting or xbox just in general an interesting thing to look at um, man, I was, you know, I was, I was capturing some official emulation stuff for Analog Frontiers Part 3 as well. Like, you know, I, I'd, I'd played, you know, the, one of the first things I played on my Series X was Panzer Dragoon Orda. But like, I was, I was playing it again. And I was just like, you could have convinced me that that was like a proper remaster and not just emulator. I mean, it, it is so good looking. Yeah. And as and, you said, I mean, a lot of that comes down I, to just the design of it is so good. I know. Like, I mean, it's 60 frames per second. I, I don't know if it's native 4K, but it's a very high resolution. It is Whoa. just gorgeous on the current systems. It's it's so good looking. Oh, it's, thought... it's hard to believe. Uh, but yes, we do plan to get to those. But an another factor, too, I mean, we've only got so many Xbox consoles. I mean, I've got, I've got two working Xbox systems, I think, and one, one not working one. Um, but like my understanding is there are a lot of different video encoders used. Uh, and, um, you know, apparently there's a lot of different sort of quality profiles, so to speak between between units <laughs> come on how many times I feel like this is it's almost the end right there's like one more maybe uh... one more level after this one or two, but then there's like like the death egg zone or something like that. Right. I think it's a little shorter if I remember, but um, there was uh five dollars from Dominic Rinaldi. Thank you. Saying Thank you. Uh, used to work at, used to work in a factory. Now I got a job at a game store really close to me. I start tomorrow. Hopefully, I like Congrats. it and get first dibs on games. <laughs> Nice. So is it like a local, like a local game store where you can get some, some, some classics, easy access to some classics. Oh, there's the Metropolis zone. See, this is about the point where I'm starting to feel like, oh, yeah, it might be a little bit long, a little bit too long. <laughs> I saw some people saying a thing or two about uh, PP, SS, PP. And that reminded me, one, you know, one of the games I was playing on was um, Hot Shots Golf. And something that was really interesting to me was um, when you do the, um, when you actually 
input your uh, swing for the meter. Uh, it actually takes a screenshot. And after you register your command, then it goes back to game graphics. Because it, like, for a moment, like, everything becomes static except for the meter. And it's like a native PSP resolution. And then it, like, snaps back to, you know, high-res graphics. Uh, when, you know, when emulated. So that was kind of interesting. Really? I mean, that's one of the cool things about emulation. Is you can, like, remove, like, like layers. Me. Yeah. Like, remove layers or just show, like, wireframes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I know that John has used that kind of stuff in DF Retro before. Yeah. Which is a really great way to illustrate certain things. Yeah. I thought the interface on PPSSPP was really nice. I, I am impressed that you say PPSSPP like every single time. <laughs> well, that's what it's called. Yeah. Or, or, or uh, PISP. <laughs> well, I mean, that's apparently what British people call the actual PSP. Yeah. So I've heard. Oh, come on. How's that, does it come all the way back down? Or do I got to go get it off screen here? Then we got X says Hot Shots yeah. Golf doesn't play properly on PPSSPP for some got reason. Got knocked off that nut. It, I mean, I you know I, I didn't I didn't play a full round when I was capturing footage, but it seemed to work pretty well. I was tempted I to, to, to boot up everybody's wrong. golf recently. Yeah, I mean, it always was everybody's golf. Everywhere well, I'm, I'm talking about like the U.S. The yeah, person. I mean, it is. I it hate is. that that happened. I. I mean, oh, I, def I definitely think it killed sales of the game, but maybe they felt like it was just like a necessity, like they needed to do it. They needed to pull that bandaid off, and if I they mean, wanted I, to do it. But I, like, I don't think it helps. There's no reason to, yeah, like consolidate the names of that. I think. I agree. Like, you know, it's it's not like Dragon Quest. I feel like it was. It was valuable to, you know, and, you know, with Final Fantasy bringing the numbers up to speed, you know, worldwide, Dragon Quest, you know, call it, stopping calling it Dragon Warrior, you know, it, it was good to have a unified brand for those worldwide, sure. But with Hot Shots Golf, like, it, it oh. just doesn't even matter. And I prefer, I definitely prefer the name Hot Shots Golf. In fact, the only one that I've bought under the Everybody's Golf brand is the VR game. Oh, really? Yeah, ah. I I didn't I didn't get the PS4 one. Oh, I got it. I think it was like ten dollars or something like that. I mean, it's been. I I, 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 w I would get a PS5 version if they like have like individual blades of grass or something. Like Come on. Like they, they, oh. they, they need to they need to upgrade to, to really high high quality grass effects. <laughs> and then I'll then I'll get it. Honestly, like what I mean, just like going circling around or it's like it doesn't seem like I'm making any progress here. Scoot Diggity says, I saw in your 2020 uh, uh, game video you were a little disappointed in Cosmic Star Heroine. I think you were playing the wrong game. You were actually meant to play CrossCode. I've heard uh, a lot been... of really good stuff about CrossCode, and I've seen it on Amazon for like 30 bucks. I've heard that it's very good. Is it is it like a, is it supposed to be like Fantasy Star or something? Well, it's I think it's like a kind of a physics-based RPG type thing. Uh, that, <laughs> that doesn't sound like Cosmic Star Heroine. No, but I think they, they look similar. Oh, uh, okay. I don't, I don't know anything about it. I, I've definitely heard I've, the name. I, I, I've heard a lot of really good stuff about it. I've heard, had a, some people I know say that it's like the best game that they played all last year. Wow. I, I, I thought You've of Cosmic Star Hero so today stupid. myself because I was... Uh, I was Just I was, let me I was, set, go a different way for crying out loud. Please don't. Please, like... I, what, I haven't seen what happened Jeez, yet. Jeez, I mean. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, I, I was thinking of Cosmic Star Hero one earlier today because I um um I was uh I, I, I was adding games to my PS4 shelf. And uh you know that that was that was one of the games that got, you know, bumped to the next shelf down and organized. Oh wow, you found the exit pretty quickly after all that. Yeah, I can't believe it. Do you have to make, can you make manual saves like per level? Like, so you never have to go through act one again? Right. I think it saves after each level. You know, speaking of games that have a, a, um, a, a fancy star like vibe, um, I, I, I really want to play through, you know, I, I used it several times on the NT Mini Noir video because it's one of the expansion audio games I have, but, you know, I, I don't understand Japanese well enough uh, uh, to, to play it without a translation patch. Um, uh, but um, Lagrange Point. Yeah. Just, like, it, it just has a really cool vibe to it. Um, like... I don't know. I just, I just like the way it the does game feel looks. like it, like an attempted answer to Fantasy Star, which I wonder if it, it. I mean, I assume it came out after. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got to be a relatively late game. I'm not sure exactly what year it is though, but you know, it's only it's the only VRC seven game. Um, but or I don't think it's the only VRC seven game, but I think it's the only one that actually uses the sound capabilities. I think there's another one that technically uses that mapper, but it, it doesn't use the sound or something like that. I forget what it is though. Uh, but it, I mean, it just, I don't know. It just, it feels really cool. I, I think I've heard people say this got like a lot of, uh, uh, got like a really high encounter rate, but that kind of stuff usually doesn't bother me. I mean, so does fancy star too. Yeah. You know, I was, um... I don't mind high encounter rates if it helps you become overpowered in the game. It's a lot easier <laughs> because of that. I was, um... When I was, when I was capturing, you know, official emulation stuff, I, um, I was... I record a little bit of... A little bit of Fancy Star on the Switch. Uh, the Sega Ages Fancy Star. And... <laughs> I like that. So that... that like bug that bug robot like threw his arms and he's just like standing there after it's like it's like what do i do now like what what, what do i do with the rest of my life <laughs> until until like, like, i guess he, until he gets fixed he like blew but, it like on on this one well, this well one the, attack. The, the, th the thing is the sad part about it is is that it's like this innocent animal trapped inside this body yeah. <laughs> it can't get out and it's like I use my weapon. I can't even fulfill my destiny now. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I, when I was playing some of the Sega Ages Fantasy Star to capture, oh, I went for three three levels like, this time. My my Switch profile says um, says I've played that for five hours or more, and there's no way. Wait wait what game? Fantasy Star on Switch. There's no way I've played that for five hours. Maybe you had it sitting. Maybe you left it sitting. Although, like, I, I feel like you're not the kind of person that, like, leaves your game sitting, like, on a screen for a long I, time. I'm usually pretty pretty good about, like, I will, at the very least, like, back out to, like, the system dashboard or something. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I, I, I will do that. I too. like my game clocks to be relatively accurate. Yeah. I, I don't often leave a game just sitting. Like, you know... But I may have. The only thing I can think of is, you know, I think I didn't I write most of the switch portion of the Fancy Star best way to play Fancy Star episode. I think I wrote most of that section. Uh, and so I may have just left it sitting there while I was like testing various things. Yeah. But that, like that would make sense. <laughs> but like I haven't like, pl I, like I I, ne I never even got like the the I, I never even got like another party member or got the 
the spaceport license. Like I've I've barely touched it. <laughs> So I feel like five hours, it feels weird to see if say I've played it five hours when I really haven't. I mean, I was mostly just like analyzing the, I mean, you played it for capturing most of the footage, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I finished the game on there. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, you, you captured the footage, but like you want me to like sort of take a closer look at some of the graphical features. Right. I wanted that version anyway because it seems pretty cool. Yeah, but you know I haven't played through it. It's just—it's so funny <laughs> thinking of it. It's like, what? I have not played it that long. Uh, I saw a, a donation from Sean Quinn. You might have missed. Uh, I did see it go through. Yeah, there was uh, from Sean Quinn. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Saying, uh, Corey, way to keep it together at the end of that one. Not a single f bomb. <laughs> Well, it takes some practice. <laughs> uh, and there was also um, five Canadians. Oh, thank you. Uh, not five Canadians, but five Canadian dollars. Uh, I assume this comes from just one Canadian uh, from D Manufacture. Thank you. Um, uh, saying the lazy millennial devs over at Clueless Capcom confirmed Ari Village is a base PS4 Xbox games. It'll be held back by ancient hardware into the trash. Well, I don't, I don't agree. I mean, I, I, I do agree that it would be nice to see games. Uh, it, it would be nice to see games, uh, you know, take more full advantage of the new generation hardware sooner than later. Uh, but, you know, I don't think that's going to make it a bad uh, a bad game. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't like calling game developers lazy because, you know, they, they work extraordinarily hard. Um, you know, it, it, it makes sense. I, I, I would say from the, from the, you know, I wouldn't blame the developers. I would blame, you know, you know, if, if you don't want, if you don't want Resident Evil 8 to be held back by, I, I can't call it Resident Evil. Village. I will never call it Resident Evil. It's Resident Evil 8. Yeah. Um, uh, um, you know, it, you know, if you want to blame anyone, I, I would say, you know, I mean, obviously the people at Capcom who wanted to make money, because <laughs> I remember there was um, there was a quote from developers uh, last year saying uh, they they weren't promising they weren't promising a last gen version. They were like, we'll try. Oh, I didn't. So they not really expect sure. that. Didn't even see it coming. It's like whips out um, lasers. But I actually, I, I played uh, just a couple hours before the stream. I actually played the the the, the demo that's on PS5. Um, just because, like, I, I wasn't going to, but then, like, I read that it wasn't. Like, I didn't watch the showcase. Because, you know, I don't want to be spoiled at all. And, you know, obviously, I know I'm going to be buying the game. Um, uh you know, I, you know, and the, the demo is just kind of a, you know, it's kind of like how the, the demo for Resident Evil 7, you know, it has no combat or anything. It's kind of just letting you kind of poke around at the world a little bit. You know, it, it you know, it, it, it did not really convey what the, what the game was really going to be like. Um, but, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was pretty neat looking into it, but, you know, you know, obviously, you know, it was just, they call it a visual showcase. Like, it's just meant yeah. for you to kind of look at the game. I mean, it's certainly not like the most, like, technically stunning game ever. Oh, come on. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it, I mean, Resident Evil 7 had pretty low res texture. Yeah, you're kidding me. I think mostly because it had to stick to 60 frames per second uh, for PSVR. So it's a pretty low texture, resolution texture game. Certainly the textures are higher resolution than Resident Evil 7. Um, uh, but, um, oh, I, I see what happened. <laughs> That's too bad. Um, well, at least it's every level. But yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, 
you know, I mean, I, 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 I look forward to seeing more games take advantage of the of the hardware, but obviously Resident Evil is like such a big thing that, you know, I, I agree that it would be nice for people, uh, you know, that have last gen hardware to be able to play it, uh, you know, this early in the gen, since it's so hard to get a hold of the new systems. Um, I think, I think, I think it's okay. Uh, I mean, I kind of bet there, there'll be 30 frames per second because it seems like a stretch to think that they'll manage to pull off at least a smooth 60 on the others. Um, but speaking of Resident Evil 8, um, you know, they, the only thing that I know from the, the, the showcase uh, you know, since I didn't want to watch it, um, is the release date I think is May seventh. Yeah, I, and, yeah, I uh, think so. You know me, I'm I'm massive Resident Evil fan. Like, there's no way I'm waiting to play Resident Evil Eight. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so I'm like, okay, like. Analog Frontiers Part Five. It's going. It's going to be. It's going to be done and out by May seventh. That's like, that's that's your goal. That's the. That's okay. that's the goal. Like if. Like that 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 is absolutely my goal. Like. Like. I'm. I'm going to. Really hold myself to that. I'm going. I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen. Uh, and I think it'll be possible because I think oh. part four is part three and four are both probably going to be about an hour long. Part five, I think will be a good bit shorter, probably more similar to the length of like part two, I suspect. Um, but part four, I think is going to be. That's what I call platforming. Um, uh, part four, uh, I think it's going to be a little easier to edit because, um, it's not going, I think it's going to re rely more significantly on B roll that we shot, uh, while doing the interviews, uh, rather than stuff that I'm going to have to gather fresh um so i think it'll even though it's long i think part four will be a pretty quick edit um part five has a little more writing that i have to do compared to the other parts um but i i don't think it's going to be a super long one so i think having having everything out by may 7th because I, I would love to just treat myself to just binging re8 as soon as it comes out just binge it just close all, close all the, pull all the curtains. Get as dark in here as possible. Just, just play RE8. This, this is my, it's my goal. Sounds good. Sounds good. It's happening. It's happening. It may, maybe it'll even release on May 7th. <laughs> so I can binge on Resident Evil 8, but y'all can't because... Uh, I'll have that last because one. you'll be having to watch Analog Frontiers Part 5. But it'll only take a little of your time. <laughs> if I just keep on going fast. It's gonna, okay, that's what I should have done. I should not have done it. Oh, look at it. He's just... So see how see this guy? He's, to... he's just sitting there. He's like... Kill me! <laughs> I have no arms. Uh, how uh, how much are you having to redo? Are you on Act One? No, no, no. It it saves per act, so it just okay, okay, that's good. I just had to redo this one, and I get to do it again here. Lord X Mugen is asking if I send you a copy of Azuric, Corey, will you play it? I I don't know what Azuric is. Uh, it's a it's um. The uh, it's a Xbox game. 
You don't. You don't need to send it. I can just play it like I have it on my Xbox hard drive. I mean, what I, is uh, it? It's just. It's is just it like good? an early kind of like action RPG on the, the original yeah. Xbox. There, there, there's, there's a whole lot of the Xbox library that I do not know much about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like it's, a, it's like a, like a launch window game, I think. Come on, let's see. If, don't crash. Please don't crash. I don't want to do this again. Uh, Roost to Blood, trying Corey since you played it last year. Should I get Ratchet Deadlock? Just notice I never bought. Uh, you know, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I actually finally got back to it um just a week or two ago oh. and i kind of thought it would be hard to get back into um since it'd been a while since i played it and i it, i just got right back into it like with no trouble at all um you know which i think just kind of goes to speak to how good and pure the 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 game design of you know the the core mechanics of ratchet and clank are um That's it just it, it plays very well it feels very the, from a controls perspective it feels very modern um uh and i had a lot of fun uh so is going back to it actually uh even after even after i'd started it months earlier uh you know it's you know it's, it's sort of shorter challenges and things like that um but uh, you know so it's you know don't expect a you know kind of the, the same kind of content as a full game uh full regular ratchet and clank game but it's still a lot of fun i thought so it, it is, plays very well is is sonic like straight up murdering all these animals right now uh, maybe they have parachutes. I doubt it. Well, they, they look like they're turtles, so they could have parachutes. Well, like, some of them are like, like, I don't know. I think they're all just falling to their death. parachutes in their shells. Oh, I see some chickens. Yeah, I mean, he, he might be. Maybe they're already dead. I, or maybe I, they're landing on this ship down here. No. I mean, there's no fall damage in Sonic. I mean, if Sonic doesn't have fall damage, what? Why would other creatures in his universe have fall damage? I don't know. They are they are falling to their deaths. <laughs> but uh, you know, I was actually thinking about it after I finished Ratchet Deadlocked. Like it's it's weird to think about, but that's the only ratchet and clank game that i actually finished on a ps2 because i played Whoops. the hd versions of the other ps2 games that's the the wing fortress there's the... i feel like this is going to be one of those gripping my controller and it's some some well i do remember that there's parts of this where like Sonic like holds on to like bars as um Oh perfect. Oh. As the wind blows. Yeah. So it is a little little intense, I guess. Is this is this fire gonna hurt me? I guess not. The fire does not hurt you? <laughs> I like that he like lets go and he's still hanging on. <laughs> He's still like. Let's see how this goes. So that fire doesn't hurt you. See, that's what I'm saying. And Mario, it's, it's so clear. I mean, maybe if you jump, it would hurt you. Okay, so I can get closer here. It's legs. so weird when you like hit those like things that shoot you forward. Like Sonic just like stays in like a standing yeah. still. Place. I feel like in further games they would just like at least have them have a running animation. Yeah. I 
that. Guys, I, I can these... should, should try decompiling the 2013 version of Sonic 2 onto PS4. Well, I mean, that'd be cool, but don't. Uh... I also we just found out we... apparently there is a uh, the Metroid 2 remake is also playable on the uh, on the PS TV or and the Vita. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Man. That is cool. Oh, it's something all the way back here. Sweet. Oh, there was uh, there was 499 from Briar Rabbit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, saying uh, thanks for the stream tonight. Needed some light and relaxing fun tonight. Oh, you're welcome. It's 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 something we look forward to doing every week. You know, like, I I th I think I said a few weeks ago, like it's it, I'm never like oh, you know, got to do the stream tonight. Like it's <laughs> it's always a good time, you know. Yeah. Every single time. Uh, and there's uh, five dollars from Ben Brody. Thank you. Saying yeah. uh, we haven't we haven't had one of these in a while. Uh, Fifty million. But once a month, you have to go skydiving and throw a live chicken to its death. For $50 million. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, even though, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not the one doing the actual killing, you know, I guess, I guess technically, you know, chickens, many chickens have died for my benefit. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I, what, what's another one? <laughs> it's dark it's dark to think of it that way but you know but the, the thing is though like i i would never go skydiving <laughs> i would never yeah i i mean i hate heights enough as it is i mean i i i actually like heights i i enjoy heights i i enjoy like you know being up high on a mountain or you know, oh, I didn't uh, you see know, that there. Uh, it's like hidden. It's camouflage. High building or tower. I like I like seeing how far you can see. You know, as long as I feel safe. As long as I feel safe, I like heights. Uh, skydiving does not feel safe. <laughs> uh, I I just I could never never imagine <laughs> going skydiving. Absolutely not. Oh, I thought I got at the glitch right there. Oh, I have like some weird glitch going on. Oh. Let's see if I can beat still beat the level. I mean, I, I I'm sure skydiving is fun. And I'm sure if I lived through it, I I would uh Oh okay. <laughs> That's funny. Weird. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm sure if I lived through skydiving, I will. I would have had fun. But I, I'm just. I'm not. I. I refuse to have that fun. <laughs> I will not do it. Yeah, man. Gotta redo it. Oh well, at least it just takes me back here. That's not so bad. <laughs> so we, we got uh, we got five dollars from uh, I am I supposed to read that like uh, Dub Eisenhower? But I I think it's Dubenshower. Huh? I, 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 Dubenshower. I, I, when I first when I first read it, I parsed it as doobies in the shower. <laughs> he's, he's, he's smoking doobies in the shower again. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, doobies in the shower says, uh, will, will there ever be an end to the types of mods we can do to old consoles? Is is there such a thing as a is a feature complete retro console? I mean that's 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 a that's a that's a good question. Um, I mean, I how I was supposed to know well, supposed to know where to go I, there. I definitely could see there being a you know people get mad when there's like new versions of EverDrives because they want they want their thing that they own already to be the one and only definitive thing that they need forever. And, you know, 
But the thing you have to always remember with that kind of stuff is, um, uh, you know, the, the device that you have and doesn't become bad, it's every bit as good as it was the day that it came out. The NES, an unmodified NES, is every bit as good today as the day it came out, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, the in the uh, whatever RGB mods or the high def NES, I mean, they're as good as they were back then. Uh, you know, so, I mean, you know. The, the, I, the problem is that we as people are not feature complete. <laughs> um. I mean, I, I definitely find my enthusiasm for like new mods for things I've already got a good enough mod for. Like, I definitely find it like my enthusiasm for it reduced because it's like, eh, you know, what I have is good enough. Um, you know, I, I usually don't get mad about it. Um, you get even. I mean, you know, I mean, like Ultra HDMI, idea. like, I mean, if you put Ultra HDMI and an RGB mod into an N64, I mean, that's, that's pretty feature complete, um, you know, because you've got, you've got access to digital audio, digital video, and RGB, um, you know, PS1 digital, once PS1 digital gets um, the motion adaptive there. deinterlacing, on, gonna... I'd say... I'd say, P you know, you do an X station and and that, then that's pretty feature complete. Although, you know, I guess it's not feature complete truly in the sense of you've removed the disk drive. Now, something like Satiator, you know, where you could keep the disk drive, you know, that would be more feature complete, I guess, because you still have that option. But a HDMI mod for Saturn is profoundly unlikely. How do so, I get up there? How you do know, I do this? Saturn is probably about as feature complete as, as we can expect it to be, you know? Yeah. There's something about this level that just really stressing me out. <laughs> well, you said you hate heights. Yeah. I mean, there's that one level that's similar to this in Sonic Adventure 2, like the last level. And it's, just, man, I hate that level. I, I don't remember a level like this in Sonic Adventure 2. I mean, it's been, you know, I, I, I got Sonic Adventure 2, like, shortly after it came out on GameCube. Um, just because it was kind of... It was kind of a oh, novelty to have Sega games at all because I never owned a Sega system. <laughs> so it was like that, that's how you do it right there. That is how you do it. <laughs> what? I just want to wait for you to see it. Okay. That's how you do it. <laughs> Oh, so you... I skipped, like, that whole hard part. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm dying to know if you can do that on Genesis. Or even if you can do it on the original, like, the, the natively compiled version of this game on iPhone. Uh, I doubt it. Like, this this is... This is unique to the... What, what, what if you can't even do this on the on the PC version that you can compile of this. Like, what if this is you, what if it's unique to PlayStation TV? <laughs> I mean, it very well could be. <laughs> Felt good, though. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know where I'm going at this point. Hopefully, I'm almost at the end. Because I'm pretty over this level. Oh, there we go. There's that. I, oh, I'm inside. Oh. I got a boss. Looks like the boss from... from looks like, seems like a Revenge of Shinobi boss, kind of. I don't know, I'll have to 
Let's see it when I catch up. Are you doing the low latency for the regular low latency? What do you mean? Well, I'm just curious because I've I'm kind of far behind, but it might it might have just been because of all the problems that were early happening earlier in the stream. I don't know. Oh yeah, this is a well. It's I I see what you're talking about. You're talking about the boss of the airship and yeah. It. Like this, yeah, like the third think boss, I of. think. It, it, it's definitely different, but I I, I know what, know what you're talking about. That boss was really easy in Revenge of Shinobi, but it just kind of took some time. Ah, oh, come on. You know, we, uh, Drum and I were pretty, pretty impressed with ESWAT once we got to the end of it. Like, please don't make me, I, I want to beat this thing so I can play this level again. You know, remember when I streamed it on here and like I made very little progress? I was like kind of yeah. intimidated by it. And Drum was like, ooh, he, he kind of hated it at first. And then like we, kept gradually like figuring out like oh like here's an easy way to beat this boss and like we, we kept figuring out like neat tricks that like made you know almost every portion of the game eventually became pretty easy despite starting off feeling very difficult so it was kind of a cool progression getting through the game is that impossible uh, like is there a possible way to like avoid that especially if it's like in the middle like that there's I'm not sure if that's even possible. Or is this the whole thing is to kill it, it really just kill it as fast as you can. Come on. Yeah, the stream's been going very smoothly for a while, so I, I don't know what was going on at the beginning. Oh, wow. There was uh, a $15 super chat Whoa. from Trey Joey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, saying uh, uh, Gaming Blows gave a super chat earlier. Also, great work so far, Corey. Also, also, either of you want a VHS promo tape for Majora's Mask slash Banjo 2? Looking to donate to Emily. Ooh. Is that... Uh, is, is that... I don't know that one. I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised I wouldn't have it. Like if it, if it was level again. Power, I mean, I was a subscriber back then and I got other videos. I, I'm not familiar with that one. I would be very interested. Although you should probably send it to Corey because he's got a better situation for digitizing tapes. Yeah. I can add that to the, send it to Corey and then he'll probably give it to me later since it's more my thing. I suspect. <laughs> I would be interested in having it in my collection, but Corey, send it to Corey's PO box because he's he's got better equipment for digitizing VHS. Uh, just if you go to our YouTube page and you click on the About tab, um, you'll 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 find our uh, PO boxes. Yeah, that would be very appreciated. Uh, did when you said Gaming Blows made a donation earlier? Did, did we did we miss reading one? For, for uh, some reason, like, I feel like I've not been able to scroll as far back up the chat uh, as I usually can. Uh, the boss wasn't like what on the Genesis? Oh, did I? I mean, whatever. So is, is another quirk of this uh, Vita version? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, as long as I can, if I can get that skip thing to work again, it'd be nice. <laughs> Is there any insight on that? Uh... On the what? Uh, any insight on the tape digitization process? Uh, I'm curious. I mean, Corey, Corey just has a, a VCR that... Um... It just like upscales and... As they, I mean, a VCR DVD yeah. combo that has that happens to output do a pretty good deinterlace and upscale of of it over HDMI. Nope, not this time. I 
guess I'm gonna have to do it for real. That's weird it didn't happen again. Um. That's not how I do it, I guess, huh? But yeah, I mean, you know, that he is, is have, a, have, a, have a working VCR. <laughs> My VCRs are in pretty bad shape right now. I, I need to get new belts on them. Um, the the manager at one of my one of my local game shops has has kind of been in, intending to uh, to uh, learn about fixing VCRs. And I said, well, if if, if you have if you have good luck with any of yours, uh, help me out with some of mine because <laughs> I, I I've got a lot of VCRs, but most of them are not working very well at the moment. Uh, you know, I think the I think the retro tink. Uh, is looks great for digitizing VHS. It's just that uh, sometimes the sync drops. Although I, I'm not sure if maybe some of the later RetroTink devices. Uh, Bob Bob was saying something about digitizing VHS tapes and talking about the RetroTink in a recent podcast. So I, I I should ask Mike about it. Like if like if the tolerance has been increased or anything like that. Because I I, I do feel that. I thought for sure I was done. Come on. VHS looks really good on the retro tank. It's just that, uh, you know, you, you can still get a lot of sync drops because of the unstable VHS signal. Uh, Gaming Blows said uh, you may have chosen to not read it intentionally. I, I did not. Uh, I don't know what the comment was. I just uh, repost it. Uh, was the question I, I see he posted Corey would you rather have to be every Genesis Sonic game back to back or do Prism again do Prism I mean I don't know if that was the question or not I don't know they, they sound like equally unpleasant I mean I mean when you say uh, oh I'm every Genesis Sonic game, game I'm like, that's oof. not that bad of a level I mean, every Genesis Sonic. That'd be pretty rough. I mean, you know, I I I I did a I did a 24 hour charity stream playing Sonic 06. So, you know, every anything is possible. I can't. So. So I can't guide where it goes. Really? Someone said that this boss is different on Genesis, so maybe it's behaving strangely. More of the widescreen like trips up like. There we go. We'll just how far it can move or something. Just, we'll just get him like that. Oh, did I miss a super chat from Solid Unit? You were asking if you guys can think of any must-play PAL exclusive games. We wouldn't be the per people to ask because <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of PAL experience. That that sounds like a great question for Audi. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of like the, um, you know, Sega made a lot of games that only released in like Europe and Brazil for like Master System. Uh, apparently, like most of the, uh, the Asterix games, like the, you know, the French cartoon character Asterix. Apparently, most of those are pretty good, and Sega did a lot of them. Um, you know, th there obviously are games like, you know, Terranigma that, um, you know, didn't come out in North America, but, uh, you know, that's not truly PAL exclusive because, uh, you know, the English translation is PAL exclusive, I guess, but... Um... Oh, uh... Lady Garden says Dizzy, which, uh, you know, oh, a, I guess a, number IBM, people, huh? a number of people um, mentioned Dizzy uh, in response to Mystic Bell in, uh, in our end of the year video, because I said, you know, I, I really liked how it was. It was fundamentally an adventure game, but it looks it looks like a platform. Please let me but start it's, there. Please. It's really an adventure okay, game. Good. Um, and I said, I really it's, liked it's the death that. egg and I, death I'd egg. never really played a game that kind of blended platforming and adventure gaming to that 
extent. Um, and a lot of people said, uh, it sounds like you'd really like Dizzy. That's not how I beat him either, huh? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Yeah, so I mean, that does, how do I get them? Guess that. I believe there are some notable pal pal games, but you know it's. I think you just gotta hit his forehead like really carefully, oh. if I remember. I see. Snow That's White right. game on the PS2, exclusive to PAL. Is that is that what the implication is? Of course, there's all those uh, um, Phoenix games, uh, like John and Adi did that Let's Play recently. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that is exactly a noteworthy PAL game. Uh, noteworthy PAL games, but uh, yeah. Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys on PS2. Okay, <laughs> that's a weird name. Seven <laughs> Clever Boys. <laughs> clever Boy. I was, uh, one of the games I recorded on, on Dolphin uh, was... Uh, I gotta see... Is there any way to know whether or not he's going to jump? Basically, you stay in the middle and you just are ready for him either way. I, I saw someone bring up Pac-Man. It reminded me that one of the games I captured on Dolphin was uh, it was it was that Sonic or not Sonic. Oh, uh, I thought I could well, get two. I think what, what was it? Pac-Man World 3, I think, was a, a game that I saw saw on GameSack. Um, not that long ago, I don't think. Um, and he, he was... <laughs> He was like, Joe, just what just what Pac-Man needed, a radio buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Pac-Man needs a radio buddy. It is pretty ridiculous. You gonna jump this time? Nope. <laughs> Okay, so he does have a pattern, so I, I think that I understand his pattern. Yeah, I don't think it's that crazy, but you just have uh, to be ready. Bill's for lost. You have to be ready for oh, that dash that. because it's just it's so quick. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good run for the Bills this year. Oh. They did. They didn't. They lost. It looks like. This, uh, sorry, so I hopefully I, I didn't miss any anyone else's super chats. If if they don't if they don't appear in this chat, then you know if it, if it's sent another way, sometimes it's hard for me to see it. Um, Corey has access to like the full list uh, on his computer, but I don't I don't think I missed anything else. For some reason, I just I can't the, oh. the chat. It's not letting me scroll as far back up okay. this week as normal. I don't I don't know why. There was two pounds from Pedro Lex. Thank you. Uh, saying snooker games on Pal Mega Drive. All terrible. Not familiar with those. But yeah, there's like uh, there's like a number of like uh, like Sega developed like Disney games and Asterix games and stuff that like only came out in regions like Europe and Brazil. Um, and I believe a lot of them are, are supposedly quite good. Although jump, I, I knew it, I knew you know, it. I don't know if there are like NTSC conversions of those. And if there are, do they, are they too fast? You know, I don't, I don't know. In fact, I believe one of the games I used in Analog Frontiers Part 1 to demonstrate 
50 hertz. Not that I, you can really demonstrate 50 hertz in a 60 hertz video, but oh, come on. Um, you know, I, 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 it was one of the Master System Asterix games. Is Spin Dash under him, not directly under him? Just to the left when he goes to his head, all he needs to do is jump on his head. I mean, I'm close. I mean, how, how many times do I got to hit him? I, mean, I feel like I'm hitting him quite a bit. Enjoyed Sonic Mania, but still prefer Sonic CD as your favorite. You know, I I really want to play Sonic CD because it's so different from what I understand in terms of just sort of the general pace and structure of the game that it, that it almost sounds like a good yeah, Sonic mind. game for a non-Sonic fan. Um, so I, 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 I do kind of want to play Sonic CD. Uh, you know, I... I, I thought Sonic Mania was kind of... I, I was surprised how much it recycles. Like, it does have a ton of new content, yes. Um, what, Sonic CD? But, like, the first level and a half of each zone was kind of a rehash. I mean, different level designs, but kind of a rehash. And... I mean, even as not really a Sonic fan, like that kind of disappointed me. Like it's, it just feel, it feels like it's leaning too overtly into the nostalgia in that sense. Wait, Sonic CD level design was randomly generated? Actually. That, that, I don't that, think that, that's you know, true. Uh, that would make me less interested gosh darn it i don't know why i'm having a stupid problem with this thing i can't imagine that there that it was okay so i can hit him twice somebody says oh you can hit him twice the first time how many people actually want sonic adventure 3 i mean i've heard I've heard Sonic Unleashed is like kind of started development, like considered Sonic Adventure Three, but you know I don't I don't know how accurate that is. Sorry. You know, e even though like so Gosh, many of them aren't very good, like for for whatever reason, I I oftentimes find myself more interested in the 3D Sonic games than the 2D ones, and I don't know why. Like, I mean, there's sometimes a bit of a train wreck, and you know maybe that's maybe it's yeah, you know, it's just the appeal of watching a train wreck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean. When I played through Sonic 06 for that that marathon, uh, you know, there 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 kind of becomes just this moment of acceptance when you're playing through Sonic 06, where it's just like nothing seems all that bad anymore. You know, it's just kind of like, well, this is this is my life now. This is what I'm doing, and. You know, it just like it, it's the, you, you become so accustomed to it. Like the first couple of hours of Sonic 06 are like so bad, like so bad. And then like after that point, like it was it never felt as bad as it initially did again. Like, I don't know if it actually got better later on or if I just got so very used to its bad ways of uh, playing. You know, it's, it's it got used to its, all its idiosyncrasies. I, 
you know, I thought the shoot Dr. Robotnik fight at the end of Sonic's section of Sonic 06 was actually a pretty fun battle. I really don't like this fight because it's hard to tell when his claws are too far forward. Yeah. Just like you died just there. I just saw you die that way. Shoot. So someone's saying, oh, you can juggle it if you uh, attack him, you know, if you just, like, let him bounce. So maybe I can do it. I'm just doing a lot better now. I got it. It's just it's annoying because they make you do it without any any hits. Gerald Tan says Sonic Adventure was the only Sonic game I enjoyed enough to finish. Never enjoyed any of the 2D Sonics before that. You know, Sonic Adventure. <laughs> you know, I've got I've got I've got the Dreamcast version. I haven't played through it yet, but, um, you know, when I, I gotta be honest when I watched you and John play it on the stream that one time, like, I, I feel like my, uh, my enthusiasm oh. for, for playing it, it kind of went down a little bit because like, it just, it looked very, wait, what game? Sonic adventure one. Hmm. It looked difficult to figure out where to go but it may have just been like you i remember you had a lot of trouble figuring out where to go but yeah. it may have just been a situation of you're on stream you're trying to get places in a hurry john knows where he's going and you didn't know where you were going it just seemed like he had to tell you so much where to go and maybe like it would be much more obvious when you're just playing the game normal but in the context of that stream it looked very confusing Three hits right there. It's like one, two, three. So I got six. They'll be asking if I played Ape Escape three Sorry. yet. I haven't, but maybe I'll do it this year since I I played uh I played uh two or one two years ago and two last year. So may as well. I'd like to. So is it best just to kind of wait until his claws are? Wow, you 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 wrecked you, you wrecked uh, Metal Sonic. Yeah, I I don't I I just I remember never feeling comfortable in this fight because of of like his claws. Like, I feel like I usually waited until his body was actually low down, but then the fight goes on for so long. Yeah. There's a sparkle in the train station in Sonic Adventure 1 that always tells you where to go. Okay. Well, that's, that's good to know. I just, I just remember like, John was like telling Corey, like, uh, like, because Corey kept falling behind and he didn't know where to go. And then John kept having to describe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hadn't played the, like, I didn't play through the game since it was pretty, pretty new. Yeah. I assume that Oh He is he is fast. I mean I'm not little by little. You know, I suspect that I'm not the only person that has died this many times on this boss. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think he's he's kind of annoying. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, it is kind of insulting to have to fight Sonic, Metal Sonic again every time. I mean, because once you got him down, you got him down, you know? Yeah. Like why I don't understand why this last area is as hard as it is. You can take this boss slowly and steadily. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I remember like really waiting until it was like very clear that you could hit him, because yeah. <laughs> well, at least I can get him pretty good now. I'll eventually get him. Can I damage him when he's like right here? Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, I can, but I die at the same time. To run the whole right edge of this Sorry, before the big... I don't understand. Can you please tell Corey to run to the whole right edge side of the big Robotnik fight before it begins because you're under the big Robotnik and it can hit him six times more. From the back? If I, can I hit him from the behind? That, that does sound like a good, uh, yeah. a good start to the fight. Probably where classic Sonic detractors got their opinion of the series. Ah, I don't know about that. <clears throat> there's there's just a lot of little game design things throughout the games that aren't my favorite. Yeah. Okay, so if I go over here, I can get him right here. This is not going to kill me. Man, you're just starting to fight Metal Sonic on my screen. So I should, maybe I should not jump. Maybe I was hitting his. You'll make bombs if you do that. Hit him in the butt, but that's, not the flame. That's a good question. Warren, Warren Hokey uh, with $2 saying, so overall this port or use emulation on the Vita? I mean, this gives you widescreen and yeah, I guess I mean, saving every, every act. The, uh, the scaling doesn't seem wonderful. Yeah, but but I'm sure I think, maybe they'll work on that. Yeah, yeah. Run straight right and do nothing. Okay. Then I can hit him in the butt. What if I duck down? Okay. I was aiming for his butt. Even for the butt. It doesn't. I don't know. It seems like a bit more of a pro strat than it was made out to be. Yeah, I'll try it one more time. Yeah, this is a decompilation of Christian Whitehead's version. I, I mean, I can't hit him in his butt, or else I can't can't touch the flame. Well, I can't. So I can't. I assume I can't touch his legs either. So I mean, it's like a. Can you hit like the backpack? No, I can't touch the flame. But I mean, like the the side of the backpack. 
I can try. I mean... He has to move two legs, then you can jump on him like crazy. So jump on him, like... He has to move two legs. He has to move two legs, so maybe directly underneath isn't this. Is this, this is called the uh, it's called the Ant Man versus Thanos strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw anything about it. Yeah, I, I've I've heard of Okay, I gotta wait till he stops walking. Okay. It sounds like you need to go more for the butt than the back, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna move. Okay, he's moved two legs. Let's see what happens. Well, I got one hit. This is. Wait, was the Ant Man strategy actually referenced in Endgame? I only saw Endgame once. I don't, I don't remember it actually coming up in the movie. What? What? Warren Hokey said that the the Ant Man strategy was referenced in Endgame, but I don't, I don't remember it. I don't think so. I, I, I only saw it the one time in the theater. I've never watched it off of your voodoo. I should. Just, right, I've got I've to creep up on him and then jump straight up. Well, it, exactly. It sounds like more of a pro strategy than that I'm capable of here. It's like, wait till, okay. jump over the flame and onto him. I mean, this is... Whatever. I mean, I don't think anybody wants to see me, like, learn how to do this right here. How many times do I got to hit him to beat him? I... I, 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 I think you should just Quite try to try to do it straight. Yeah. <laughs> Robot, Robotnik's butt is forbidden. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> oh, I got a crash. Like that's maybe it crashes as every certain amount of time. I wonder. Twelve hits, eight, ten, ten, twelve, twelve, ten, twelve, eight, eight to twelve, <laughs> twelve. I mean that doesn't 12. sound that. That doesn't sound that bad, just doing it normally from the front, as long as you, you know, don't get greedy with your hits. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm not playing the real version. Because I probably would have, I mean, I would have game over several times by now. <laughs> I mean, Rocket and I Adventures forgot how hard the last two levels are, even with infinite lives. It does that game does get tough. It's so good though. That and Contra Hardcore are tied for my favorite Genesis game. So good. I was playing uh, Hardcore Uprising the other day. Capturing footage. Yeah. It's pretty good. Oh, come on. 
I'm just I'm just doing it the real way. I'm getting him when his arms are back. I was I was doing good there. Oh, I forget what the SEKs are. What are SEKs? Uh, isn't that the Kroner? Oh, yeah. Swedish, right? I think so, yeah. Uh, from Velby, thank you. Um, saying, what method do you guys usually use when recording PS2 footage? Is the frame washer still king with the scene you're lazy, or is a DVD O better? That's a, that's a great question. Um, over the past year, we we both got a DVD O oh. iScan Pro, which is just like a small box. Uh, that all it does is take um, composite S video and component input, and outputs from a D sub, which you can use like those uh, like those mono price. Um, uh, component or VGA cables uh, or whatever. You can use component. You can you can have it YPVPR from the D sub. Um, what we've been doing is running interlace through um, well to a G comp and then to the, um, the this little DVD O box. All it does is the interlace. There's no settings on it really or it, to speak of or anything. It's, it's just a DNR laser. Um, and then outputting that to the D sub on the uh, OSSC. And it's pretty good looking, uh, you know, then getting, you know, 480p. So basically it's turned into 480p and then the OSSC uh, makes that 960p. However, it has like two-ish frames of lag. So, you know, if you're playing an action game, maybe not the best idea to actually oh, play. Like, uh, his arms were back right there. Maybe not the best idea to play off of it? I'm doing fine. There's, 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 there's no butt play necessary for me to be able to do this. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, You'd have probably finished by now if you didn't try to do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some of the more, like the, the, the more complex DVDO boxes, maybe they would. Bob did some. Didn't Bob do a video on a bunch of deinterlacing stuff? Uh, I was working on like it. The larger DVDO boxes. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, you know, since since I'm playing PS2 on a CRT, you know, having the extra lag before it goes to the OSSC isn't really a big deal. But like, if you're playing RPGs or something, um, you know, uh, that would probably be a great option for uh, just you know playing. Uh, I because I really like how the OSSC handles 480p. I love how 480p looks on the OSSC. OSSC. Um, but yeah, just it, it helps to feed it something that's already deinterlaced at 480p, you know, rather than pre-upscaled, essentially. Uh, there was five dollars from Scott Linux. Thank you. Saying, would you ever revisit Atari 2600 to capture an HD resolution, or is there not much demand uh, for, for this these days? Uh, I mean, you know, Atari is, you know, it's it's a tough sell for a lot of people, including myself. You know, I think it's the coolest thing in the world that Matt Lisi's kids are into Atari and ColecoVision, you know, like we showed in Analog Frontiers Part 1. Um, uh, and I, I, it is so cool to me that they're into that when, you know, frankly, you know, most older gamers, even our age, you know, eh, Atari is a little bit of a tough sell. Um, oh, I, uh, I think I got it though. I, I do, however, eventually want to, um, get an RGB mod Atari. I've got like a, a wood, uh, six, uh, I think it's a, a heavy sixer as they call it a wood panel, um, 
uh, Atari 2600 and a uh, a junior one. That's what they call them, it's a heavy sixter? Well, th there, there are... There are ones with six toggle switches, but then there are, I believe, less common ones that are heavier. They, they just weigh more. And uh, I, I, I don't know if it was like, I feel like I heard it was maybe disproven, but like a lot of people believe that the heavy sixers are like the best models. Like, I think they might have better RF quality or something. I, for, I forget exactly what the, the supposed difference is. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I, I want to get that RGB modded eventually. I think the main option, I don't know if it's the only option. The option I'm aware of is, is Tim Worthington does have an Atari board. I do want to get that RGB mod eventually. I have never gotten a picture out of that system. I think it works though. I opened it up for Analog Frontiers Part Two, um, and I discovered that inside it, like the the RF cable, there, there's just a female RCA, like I'm, inside. I'm close. The, I'm real close. There's just a female RCA inside the console. Like, and so I figure it must be easy to get a good quality. Um, I figure it must be easy to get a good quality uh, RCA cable and just, you know, convert that for connecting to an RF. Oh. Zane's dad said they had a thicker RF shield, but it provided no benefit to output quality. Yeah, that that's what I had heard. I had heard that everyone believed that it was better, but then it's really not. But that that's kind of like the ooh, a heavy six. Oh, so there's like one more hit. Like I like three times I've died when he needed like one more hit. Well, just be careful. I know it's just. Um. But yeah, I do want to do an Atari episode eventually. Um. For sure. Uh. I just, I need to get that system working. Well, you know, I'll admit, Atari games, not so much my thing. So, you know, when I think of all the other things that I could get done on consoles, you know, you know, Atari, <laughs> Atari not, not exactly something I get excited to play, but, um, I, uh, yeah, I do want to do it eventually because I think it's interesting. Um, I got to tell you what, what I thought was pretty fun. I, I, I randomly tried the the uh, Gremlins uh, video game uh, on Atari. I, I thought it was kind of fun. <laughs> One of the more enjoyable Atari games I've played. I don't know if it's really considered all that good or not, but... It was it was very playable. I kind of alternated toward these segments where you're catching the the Mogwai off of they're like jumping off of this roof and you're catching the Mogwai. They like get your hamburger or something if you don't catch them. And then uh, after that, then you have a phase where you're shooting like the the evolved gremlins. Finally. All right. I did it. For Atari 2600, <laughs> do you really need more than a composite mod? You know, people say that a lot, and I don't really understand why. Because, yes, Atari graphics are very simple. But there will be a clarity difference with RGB compared to composite, without a doubt. I mean, sure. There, oh, it ain't so Atari ain't no I mean, no one's no one's arguing it's not, but video quality isn't about graphics quality. You know, I, I think a lot of people misunderstand that. You know, we get a lot of comments there are a lot of, you know, people who assume we don't have modern consoles, uh, which is not true. Uh, you know, well, if you care about graphics so much, why don't you just get a PS4? And it's like, 
well, first of all, I do have a PS4. And second of all, gra graphics quality and video qu image quality. No butt play needed. Not the same thing. All right. Yeah, I, I think that there's still some some like work that's going to be done on it, but I think this is really cool. I'll, I'll, you I'll got look. to the end. It is yeah. playable start to finish? Yeah. No matter how you look at it. With the, with the... there's even there's even five dollars from the Rad Ranger telling you you did it, Corey. Congratulations. So that's the only the second time you've you've beaten this. Yeah. Well, I finished uh, it. When I was recording footage of the the Switch version recently, but I mean that was just like that has a level select. I could just go straight through it. Oh, there's there's Mark Cerny. Oh, really? Yeah, as a programmer. I did not know that. Yeah, he he, was, he did split screen stuff. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, I was gonna say there's the. The donation popped up, like, way late. Oh, the donation. So there's uh, there's Phoenix Re. Rie. That's uh, Reiko Kadama. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What was her role? Uh, I don't remember. It's just, I think it was special, special thanks, I think. Yeah, it took a long time, but, I mean, I haven't played mm -hmm. this from start to finish since the uh, since it first came out. Okay, so it certainly did the special stages in Sonic 2. But he also uh, got, got the uh, the split screen to work. Dreams come true on the, on the music composer. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic 1, don't do special stages on this version. It's just plain suffering. What's so bad about it? Is it is it slow on the Vita or is it bad on the iPhone for some reason? Oh. Yeah. Man, this is a lot of credits for a game of its time. Yeah. Well, I wonder if there's extra, there's extra time for the oh, can... Whitehead version, or is it, or is it just the original credits? It's the original. Uh, it's, I, I wonder if I choose uh, two-player uh, versus. See what it looks like on here. It, it probably like makes your PS TV catch on fire. Oh, it, it, you can't even select it. It makes the uh, the death sound. Like, like <laughs> when he goes, it goes, boom, boom. Slow gotta, isn't the word for the Vita version. Well, maybe that's how we should end the stream. I want to see what a special stage looks like in Sonic 1 here. Okay. That, 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 that should be how we end it. Yeah. What's your opinion on adding Spin Dash to Sonic 1? I, I don't mind it. I really I, I like the, it... the addition of the, the drop dash that's in the in the uh, Sega Ages ones. It makes it really fun to play, I think. Oh? My... It's like the, the Sonic Mania, where you can, in the air, and you can make it just uh... drop to the ground really quick and spin spin dash. I, I, I mean, I... I, I... I, I would agree that Spin Dash is a good, probably a good addition, even though I've never played significantly. So you, you can turn it off. You can turn off Spin Dash. version that, that has it, but I, I would say it's a good addition because you can... Item type? You can really get in a position where, like, oh, you can't easily run up a slope without, like, going way far back or something. Well, you can play Sonic and Tails and Knuckles in Sonic 1. You can't even play Knuckles in Sonic 1 in the uh and the lock on 
Does the menu on the phone version look like this, or is this just part of the the this new port? This sort of simple looking menu. Oh no no, there's there's a really nice menu in the play, if you're playing on the iPhone. I don't know. It's pretty neat. It's it's kind of sad though that these versions are just like relegated to the i like iOS and. I, could, I honestly forgot that they were. I mean, at, le at least Sonic got a release on like PS3 and PC, and, did, and uh, Xbox 360, I think. Did the 3DS M2 version have widescreen? No. But it does have. It does have spin dash. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, and I still didn't get the special stage because I lost it all right there. I really <laughs> lost. Well, you, you got to get to a special stage. I got to see how bad this is. I know. I'm too busy using the touch screen there. Well, it's 50 rings, right? Yeah. But you got, you, are you sure you have to keep them? Yeah, you have to cross the finish line with them. Oh, okay. So you can get the big ring. Like, it's funny because... I've played this level so many times, and I basically never get hit on the first stage. And this is like the first time that I have in a long time. <laughs> Those grabby hands look kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> you seem happier playing Sonic 1, I can tell already. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why can't I get it? Why can't I get it? Like, Yo, that I, I've, said, though, I, I feel like that sure spinning I'm... ring looks like it's smoother in this version. I mean, I got to reset because this is stupid. Well, but this was the whole point I wanted to see. I know, but I <laughs> now I'm on Act 3. So I got to... I got to, like restart the game or else I have to play until to marble. I got to play all, all the way through. Oh, 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 you didn't get into it. You didn't get into it. Okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so I don't far. Like, I don't understand why that is happening. The Sega scream was by accident. The voice actor just did that way because he had a cold when recording it. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. I love yeah, that I mean, Japanese I guess that... art. I, 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 I bought a Japanese. Japanese I, I got the Japanese version just because I like the the art so much. Oh yeah. I have I have I have the the Japanese uh, box in a. Analog Frontiers Part Three shot. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's out of focus in the background, but like I have like the Sonic cart sitting in the Genesis. Actually, it's in a 32x on top of the Genesis, and then I've got like Sonic um, One, Two, and then Japanese Sonic One boxes in the background. I feel like the rings in general have more frames of animation. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, they might. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm looking forward to it. It's taking a long time to load it. <laughs> well, it takes a surprisingly long time <laughs> yeah. to load the level. 
I mean, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, these these mini games aren't very good to begin with, to be honest. But I, I can't even get in here. Why? What's going on? Why can't I get in here? Holy mackerel! Come on. <laughs> I can't. I cannot get past this part right here. <laughs> well, this is this is fine. I mean. It's not I mean, it's slow, but it's it's playable. So uh, it's just like playing Metal Slug Two, you know. A little bit. <laughs> it's smooth, at least. Yeah. I mean, it, it. This never looked good on Genesis. Are you kidding? I th I still think it looks really good on the Genesis. It's it's very. I mean. It, it's, you, it's, it's, you it's not, it's, it's n like when non hardware it like a, scale or uh, rotation. I mean, it's. Yeah, but there are much smoother faked rotations on the Genesis. Not, it's, not it's when this came out. Shot. There wasn't. Well. It, I, 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 I still think, think it looks really good. Uh, I mean, it's. I'm not, I'm not denying that it was not a reasonable reasonably impressive achievement but I, I i i don't i don't think it holds up all that i don't know i uh for anybody that's familiar can i overclock let me let's look at the uh the uh where is it the vita graphics configurator can i use the vita graphics configurator to overclock let's take a look Um, or is that just like per game? I think that's just like a per game setting here. Um. But I, I, I definitely, I mean, I'm, I'm bad at all of the Sonic uh, Emerald mini games but i i definitely think that two and threes look cooler although sonic mania is i i think are the best like the kind of saturn looking mini game mm -hmm. on sonic mania like the 3d sort of saturn style fox bat stargazer is saying vita graphics does not overclock okay so that must be some, you must be able to do that somewhere else, I guess. I have like so much stuff on here. Like I have, I have not had this thing on basically since I did the sharp scale episode. So it's like, I had all my stuff sorted, and, you know, <laughs> like I have all my PSP games and it's, then you get down here. These are like all the uh, PS1 classics that I actually bought and I have downloaded on here. And then you get into like stuff. And I have my minis, and it's like, oh, I have all these like st all this stuff installed because I just put it on here to show it. And uh, it's just I tried to sort it a little bit, but then it just gets ridiculous. No, I I I I, I almost finally got around to doing my PS TV hack recently, but I I just uh, I got busy with our stuff. Yeah, namely Analog Frontiers Part Three. Um, I'm seeing if there's anything else that would be fun to, to run really quick with, with sharp scale on. <clears throat> Before we call it an I it's quarter after 11. <clears throat> um. <laughs> okay. You know what? You just see what Gerald Tan wants me to play? Luftrauchers. <laughs> there it is. You will die before you master Luftrausers. You will literally <laughs> die when you play Luftrausers. <laughs> What does it say? Left Rouser is, is, is more fun than. I can't remember.
Lucas uh, Brozovic uh, with a five dollar super chat saying, "Strong people don't put people down; they lift them up." Darth <laughs> Vader. <laughs> Press the up button to rouse. <laughs> what? Just Tim. Is a fun <laughs> Tim Rogers is fun. Yeah, and this is like this is like the, your first experience. Was it like anything that he had ever done was like, or I mean, video well, content think, at least. I had really done video, but I'd read stuff he he had done before. Right, read, right, but you hadn't <laughs> seen. I mean, you hadn't seen any videos. If ever, if no. anyone has a chance, uh, you should go check out. Action button does luft rousers. I feel like he just set up his microphone and spoke into it like stream of con like consciousness. Bro, it, it it doesn't feel written in the same way that his other stuff is. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it feels like his stuff, but like, like it just it it does feel like something that he just like came up with on the spot yeah. rather than carefully playing it out. So, isn't these are the the people that made ridiculous fishing, right? Flambeer. I used to, I played that on my my iPhone oh, for a long time. Yeah, I, th I think that might be right. I've not played either. I mean, this, I mean, Left Browser is pretty cool. It's just like a, it's a, a score game, you know? That's what it's all about. I made Zenith Systems 3's dog jump when I yawned. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy always gets very interested when she hears like stream archives, like uh, especially when like Drum and Lynn are on it. Cause she's like, oh, where are they? <laughs> You can go underwater and then fly out from underwater. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have you have you played enough Luft Rousers? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm done. I don't know if there's any any last things that would be fun to to play. Hey, sleepy butt dog. You sleepy butt dog. Dog. Yeah. Um, Pretty sleepy, but yeah, I think I don't think so. I mean, I got to organize this stuff. It's giving me like a panic attack looking at all these things, just like in different <laughs> different folders like this. If I, I, no, you know, I have to work on it. Yeah. All right. Well. Thanks, everybody, for supporting me all the way through Sonic 2. <laughs> and uh, thanks, everybody, who donated and, and was patient with my Sonic 2 playing. And uh, yeah. we, will, we will see you soon. Yep, next, uh, next Sunday. Yep. All right. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>